Call to order this workshop for the Salem Springs Board of Directors January 17th, 2023 to cover the Northwest Arkansas Land Trust. Philip? Madam Mayor, thank you and board. Um, back late last year, we had discussions about an offer to sell the land in Oklahoma owned by the Salem Springs Water Resource Company uh, to GRDA. And uh, as part of that discussion after that uh, land sale was, was uh, rejected, as part of that discussion, you asked staff to look into uh, the idea or the concept of creating a conservation easement on that land. Chris, can you get my slides up there, please? So before I turn it over to the uh, Northwest Arkansas Land Trust and uh, Grady Spann and Pam Nielsen, I just wanted to refresh everybody's memory with these slides of the amount of property, the property that the city through the Oklahoma Corporation, the Salem Springs Water Resource Company owns in Oklahoma. So this slide shows uh, section 17, about 357 acres. The red circle is where the water intake is on, on the Illinois River in Oklahoma. And then there's three parcels to the south, section 19, 28 acres, uh, section 20, which is right along the edge of the river and section 29, uh, 42 acres. So all of that totals about 453 <coughs> total acres that the city owns over in Oklahoma. Uh, all of you are, I'm sure, are aware of the fact that it used to be the lake bed of, of Lake Francis, the dam failed, the lake went away, and the city owned the bed of Lake Francis. And, and through the course of various years, uh, there's been some legal challenges to some of that, and so the city doesn't own all of the old lake bed that it used to. Uh, this property here uh, is what was discussed at one time about potentially selling of that 17, section 17 to GRDA, 221 acres. Um, I wanted to point out the area along the south edge of the river is the area that is uh, required to be owned um, by the entity and, and it's a buffer zone for our water intake that's required by the Arkansas Health Department. So I'm not 100% sure if, if we were to talk about a conservation easement, how that affects that property would be something we'd have to look into. There is a existing GRDA access easement on approximately eight acres that's on the south side, encompasses the river, which the city, uh, the, the bed, the riverbed the city owns and the dam that we own, and then a section of property on the south side of the what is called Woka Kayak Park and that was to, given to GRDA when we sold the land to GRDA for the Woka Kayak Park so they could restrict access from the, su the south side of the river over to the park. And as part of that park development, uh, GRDA had to provide uh, some mitigation for wetlands and that almost 10 acres in it is an existing conservation easement that was provided to the Corps for conservation of wetlands uh, to mitigate some of the work on the north side of the river and that is required to have multiple trees planted and GRDA is responsible for that. And then this is just a bigger a blow up of the three, three parcels to the south. Um, mm. Parcel uh, number one is the 42 acres down on the southeast corner. <laughs> parcel number two is there along the river and parcel number three, uh, 28 acres uh, along, I believe it's Butler Creek, but I'm, I could be mistaken on the name of the creek, Ballard Creek. Excuse me. And then there is a, a hay lease on section 29 on the majority of it. Uh, this was uh, an, a hay lease that was executed some years ago to prevent a possible uh, adverse condemnation claim against uh, the Salem Springs Water Resource Company. Um, Oklahoma does not allow adverse possession against government entities, but we're not a government entity in Oklahoma. The Salem Springs Water Resource Company is not. So in lieu of that, the city granted a hay lease to a family, I believe um, Farley, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for uh, basically a lifetime hay lease on that property. All of that property is within, within the 100 year floodplain. So all of it is inundated by floods and then this is just another section a couple of years ago uh, as we were trying to figure out all the property that we owned and trying to find a legal description uh, we ran into a glitch with a gentleman by the name of mr anderson who has uh, been 
uh, leasing property, approximately 24, 25 acres from some other entity um, and paying them a lease on property that that entity doesn't own, that the city owns through the Salem Springs Water Resource Company. So there's another uh, piece of uh, property here that would have to be addressed. But that's all of the property that is in Oklahoma that the city owns. And Madam Mayor, with that, I would like to introduce uh, Grady Spann with the Northwest Arkansas Land Trust. When, when the city, when you as a board asked staff to look into um, uh, conservation easements, we contacted Northwest Arkansas Land Trust and Ozark Land Trust. And uh, Ozark and Northwest Arkansas Land Trust work closely together. Northwest Arkansas Land Trust is in Fayetteville. Your headquarters is in Fayetteville. Ozark Land Trust is in St. Louis. Uh, based on their discussions, they felt that Northwest Arkansas Land Trust would be the best entity to respond to the city. So with that, Grady, it's all yours, and I think uh, staff will flip the switch and your, your PowerPoint will okay. show up. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Board. Thank you for having us tonight. We're honored that you would ask us to come and talk to you about what a conservation easement is and how we do our work in Northwest Arkansas. So I'm just going to go over kind of an overview of what we do, what our organization is, and then I'm going to hand it over to Pam, and she's going to kind of get into the weeds a little bit about what a conservation easement would look like and examples of other cities and communities that we work with uh, so that you can better understand that, and then we'll be both available for questions uh, following that. So um, I am Grady Spann. I'm the CEO and Executive Director of the Northwest Arkansas Land Trust, and uh, my previous life, I was State Parks Director, so if you ever saw me in a, another place. It probably was as, as a state park director uh, for a few years. But we are a 501c3 uh, conservation organization, so we are a nonprofit. We're non-governmental, so we can we work with individual landowners to put conservation easements on their properties and, and a, a lot of different entities as a non-governmental agency. This year we're celebrating our 20th year as a land trust. And so for 20 years we've been building this organization to protect and uh, the protection of land and so we were funded founded in 2003 and we're the only local land trust but we're also an accredited land trust so there's a national organization called the um, land trust alliance and they have an accreditation process which is pretty pretty intense you have to have your finances in order you have to do certain things like monitor properties once a year and and a lot of reporting and a lot of uh, documentation of all the properties and so we are accredited, and I guess we're the only accredited land trust in Arkansas right now. Uh, so that's a big deal for us, that we are accredited. Let me see, wrong button. Okay, this is our mission, and it's pretty simple. The mission of Northwest Arkansas Land Trust is to preserve and enhance the quality of life for all people in Northwest Arkansas through the permanent protection of land. Now, we do say Northwest Arkansas, but our bylaws do allow us to work in Oklahoma and Missouri. Uh, so this is, this, you know, that might be a concern, of, and we looked into that quickly, but our bylaws allow us to go over the borders. We did establish a border just pretty much as a way to explain to people where we focus our work, but we are uh, able to work in other areas as well. So this is a pretty simple mission, and we really want to protect um, the quality of life for all people in Northwest Arkansas. So this is our focus area. These are 13 counties in Arkansas where we focus our efforts. And primarily we focus in Benton, Washington, Carroll, and Madison County because that's where the growth uh, is occurring more than anywhere else in, in Arkansas right now is the extreme growth. You know, it's anticipated in the next 20 years that we're gonna have another half million people living with us that aren't here yet. And so the protection of land and the protection of uh, natural habitats and water uh, sheds and water quality and air quality is going to become more and more critical. And that's our mission to work in partnership with developers and, and other people that are moving into the area that we can work together to create these special places and protect that. So this is a map that shows where we were in 2011. You can see the red area there. That's kind of the population density. And then by 2050, you can see the significant change. And so that's what really is driving our mission, driving our work, and driving our efforts to kind of work with 
the extreme growth to make sure that we have those natural areas and the watershed is protected. Places we protect, this is just some examples of it. It's the scenic landscapes, historic and cultural sites, family farms and working land. So we even work with small farm operations because we want to protect our locally sourced foods in, in Northwest Arkansas. Healthy forests, wetlands, rivers, and streams, and places for outdoor recreation. And so we, we just recently acquired the Lake Francis property or all the inholdings for the old Lake Francis property uh, just south of Salem Springs and we're getting ready to work with uh, the trailblazers to build trails in there to build the kind of a greenway through it and so we're real excited about the fact that we are going to be working down in this area anyways uh, to uh, allow people to access uh, over 800 acres of beautiful natural areas and that area is just absolutely beautiful so um, we do a lot of things uh, to help a lot of people to enjoy uh, the natural state. How we protect land? Land donations. People do donate land to us. They, they say, you know what, I believe in your mission. I want to leave a land legacy. Here's our property. And we actually have a uh, fee simple title to it. We also purchase land. Uh, we don't do this very often because it does cost a lot of money to purchase land. But we have purchased some property. And then we have partnerships uh, with cities. Uh, with, with other entities that allow us to work together like Kessler Mountain is a good example of a partnership where we have a conservation easement but we also work with the city and, and other organizations to allow for public access, public recreation, and then also the management of that space. And then the last one is conservation easements and that's uh, what we're going to talk to you tonight about. And so I'm, at that point I'm going to hand it over to Pam. Thank you. Thank you all again for having us here tonight. We're really excited to be here to talk to you. And um, okay, so conservation easements. So at the heart of it, a conservation easement is a legal agreement between the landowner and, um, and the easement holder, in this case would be the land trust. And it restricts certain activities on the land. You know, most commonly and at the heart of it, you're restricting the amount of impervious cover, the amount of concrete, the amount of buildings and development and um, the amount of subdivisions. We also, you know, go beyond and really tailor it. So we'll be looking at things like restricting clear cutting and really adapting it to um, the property in question. And so some entities hold temporary easements, but all of the easements that the Northwest Arkansas Land Trust holds are in perpetuity. So this easement, um, if you were to work with us, would be forever. It would stay with the deed. And um, with that, you know, we do the due diligence, which I'll talk about in a moment, to get everything established. We work um, with alongside you in that process, and then we are responsible for coming out annually to monitor the property and to make sure that the terms that were agreed upon at signing are enforced. Um, the, I just wanted to mention the property management does stay with the landowner, so in our easements, we don't manage the property. Um, but you, the landowner re retains the flexibility to do that. Um, and we do not require that certain management activities occur either. We just restrict activities. Um, and Grady touched on um, you know, the different ways we protect land, but I just wanted to show this slide because a lot of times you think about a specific property and upholding the intent with the landowner, but um, you know, one of the reasons that this work is so important to us is because the benefits of that go to the community at large. Um, you know, clean water, especially for the property in question, being the number the number one, um, oftentimes, because if you can keep development off of it, you know, if this is going into the Illinois, you know, it's the you've got the taking it out, you know, directly for Asylum Springs, you know, it's just a really high value. Um, other things and reasons to protect land, climate protection, you know, the sequestration of carbon from the trees and the vegetation, outdoor recreation, scenic views is really important to our region and also to just the economy in our region, and then wildlife habitat. Um, not only for habitat for the different wildlife that use that space, but also to support, again, the recreation economy in our area for hunting and other things of that nature. Um, going back to the easement, so the terms are flexible and we really do customize it with the landowner. Some things that I think uh, might be applicable um, that I wanted to mention is, 
you can still hay open areas, you can still lease. So if you have existing leases, that can be built in and honored in the easement. Um, you can build trails. You can install infrastructure to support that, whether it be interpretive signs, you know, um, trash cans, picnic tables, benches, all of those types of things. You can manage the forest and the riparian areas. And um, you can also sell the land. It's just the future landowner would be tied to the terms. And I also wanted to mention that public access is not required. It is allowed, um, but you do not have to open it to the public with an easement with the land trust. And a little bit about the process to set it up. Um, one of the first steps is the land trust would order a title commitment to identify any title issues that would need to be cleaned up before moving forward with signing the easement. And this is important because it protects the integrity of the agreement. Without that in place, you know, the easement might not be enforceable. Um, we do environmental due diligence to make sure there's not any hazards that we should be aware of, which starts with a desk review. And assuming that everything is cleared in that, it can stop with that outside of just conversations um, with, with you all. And then if there are any red flags in that, it could potentially move to um, a phase one environmental assessment, but we do not anticipate that. Usually a desk review of the environmental due diligence suffices. Then the land trust um, drafts the terms of the easement with our attorney, and then we, we share it for the city attorney. And if there's any back and forth needed, then those negotiations happen. The land trust staff is also responsible for creating what we call the baseline documentation report. And this is a comprehensive snapshot of the property at the time of signing. We then use that report, which is usually around 50 or 60 pages, lots of maps, lots of photos, for our annual monitoring visit. So that way we have the easement document, we have the current conditions, and then every year when we come back, we can say, okay, yes, everything is as it should be, or wait a second, you know, it looks like there's um, some construction equipment over here, you know, what's going on? Um, so then our staff, after the monitoring visit, comes back, creates a report, and then shares that with the city so they can um, know that that visit has happened, there's been eyes on the ground, and you can stay on the loop with what's going on on the property. So after the baseline documentation report and all of those other things are completed, we file and sign the easement and it goes into the public records and um, anyone that goes then to pull anything about the property will see the easement, it will stay with the deed. Um, and then how do we insure forever? Grady um, touched on this already, but we are an accredited land trust. And so with that, you know, we have to prove our standards to the commission every five years to demonstrate fiscal accountability, strong organizational leadership, sound transactions, and lasting stewardship. Um, and with that lasting stewardship piece, I wanted to call out a few points. Um, we do maintain legal defense insurance so that if we do find ourselves in the position where we needed to go to court to enforce an easement, then we would have, um, you know, funding to help facilitate that process. We also do maintain a, a legal defense fund because our insurance does not cover staff time and, and other things that would be part of that process. And we also maintain a dedicated long-term stewardship account that we grow with every project so that we do have the financial resources to monitor the easements in perpetuity. Um, and with that, I was just gonna show a few examples. So we do have easements with other cities. We have one with the city of Springdale at Rabbit Foot Lodge, if any of you are familiar with that property. Um, that was a joint project where actually the land trust holds the conservation easement on approximately 35 acres and um, there is a historic preservation easement on the, the structure, the, the actual historic lodge and the surrounding land. And so that was a really unique partnership where we could come together and get that whole area protected. Um, that the property is open to the public and they are looking at expanding um, some low impact recreation out there like a disc golf course and some other things that we were able to build into the easement. Um, and then we have the Kessler Mountain Reserve, an easement on approximately 400 acres with the city of Fayetteville. This was our first conservation easement with the municipality. Um, it, has, it was a great first one for the model and I think it really kind of set the stage for future success. Um, that 
area gets a lot of use from the public. It's a great habitat block, um, and it's just it's been a great partnership. And with that easement in particular, there's a lot of involvement between NWALT staff and City of Fayetteville staff for some of the approvals, um, but that's definitely not required. That's just how they chose to do that one. So that goes again back to customizing it and, and working to make sure that it works for everyone at the city or the landowner. Um, another one that we hold with the city of Fayetteville is on what we call West Side Prairie. Um, this was also another interesting story because it's a 40 acre conservation easement that was actually slated to be the site for a solar panel installation. And then um, through some botanical work that was done out there, the city learned that it was um, historic prairie and it was actually a really important declining ecosystem. So they um, agreed to put a conservation easement on that property with the Northwest Arkansas Land Trust and move the solar array to an adjoining property. And so now the public is able to go out there and enjoy that. It's um, a very important site for uh, declining bird species in particular, and it was just a great win-win a of a partnership. And the last one that I wanted to show tonight is with the city of Greenland. We have a, a conservation easement on 35 acres on the West Fork of the White River. Um, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with that area, but historically, um, it's on 71, on um, Highway 71, and it used to be covered with, um, uh, like, old semi-trucks. It was just a, a dumping ground, basically. Like, you, it's pretty remarkable if you look at the aerial footage. I could have included an image. You can't see the land at all. Um, so the city of Greenland worked to get all of that cleaned up, purchased from the landowner, and as undergoing restoration, which is what um, we have shown um, here, is a controlled burn that's being done out there to restore it to um, a prairie habitat and a savanna habitat mix right there on the river. And they wanted to open it for public access. And the mayor just really wanted to make sure that with all of this work that's been that's being done today, that you know, in 20, 30, 40 years, when no one remembers this time that they couldn't decide to put something else out there and that it would be preserved as open space. Um, it's also, it stays pretty wet down there, so it's also really important that, you know, it, it's benefiting the city as far as holding water in flood events as well. So that's another reason he wanted to make sure that nothing ever changed out there. Um, and then I just wanted to kind of show a map here and a photo of Lake Francis Preserve. Um, this is the land that the, Land Trust recently acquired on the Arkansas side, not far from the land that we're discussing today. Grady mentioned that you know we're, we are going to be out there quite a bit with this project, um, and so this area right here is the Woka Park, and you can see you know the boundary here. Um, so, yeah. with that, uh, we'll turn it over for questions. And, and let me add right now, overall we we protect about 6,500 acres at a total of 40 not 41 different properties in, across the you know the 13 counties so uh we're, we're hard at work but we're open to any questions we'll be glad thank you so directors i will just open the floor and you all any of you all that have questions can go ahead and ask those the mayor yes you mentioned owner management responsibility what does that entail um, so, so what I was meaning is that um, the land trust, with the conservation easement, the land trust would not go out and if you wanted to have trails, build trails. You know, we wouldn't be doing any management in your forest. We wouldn't be planting trees in your riparian buffer. If you wanted to do those types of activities, you would be responsible for them, but you would not be required to do them in the easement. It's, it would be permitted. It's just um, sometimes people will ask, well, when you hold the easement, you know, you're, people will sometimes think or wonder if we have any management obligation, and, and that's not built into the easement. Thank you. Madam Mayor, R related to that, I think this is a question more for Philip. When it comes to property management, any management of that property is on us, like any kind of um, anything that needs to happen to take care of the property is on us, right? Right. Okay. Anyone else? Hey, Mayor, just yes. one more question. 
if this were in place, and this may just be totally outside the realm of the discussion, I can't hear but it. if this were in place, I'm trying to think of just the best way to put this. Would there ever be, since you're holding the trust in perpetuity, would there ever be a opportunity for an adverse possession situation? You mean like if somebody claimed that they already owned the property? Or, oh yeah, either owned outright or usage or anything like that. Well, that... Hopefully, we'll clear all that up on the front end uh, with the due diligence. And, and, no, and, and then they, I guess if they did come back, that's what your legal fund is for. That's right. That. Okay. That's right. And there's actually, you know, I, I, Missouri State Parks actually put some of their state parks in a conservation easement. And people try to, you know, sell it or get rid of it or come against it, and they lost in court. The conservation easement actually stood. And so there, there's, I think there's case law that shows that conservation easements, uh, you know, once they're in place and they stay with the properties, uh, part of the deed, that they are enforceable. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, Philip? Uh, Madam Mayor and Board, a couple of questions. So uh, I think part of that answer is is for you director wiles is you mentioned that you would annually inspect the property to ensure that the restrictions in the conservation easement are being met so if there was someone um what's the term i'm looking for violating that easement violating that easement or uh squatting on the property uh hopefully they would find that in their annual inspection and then they couldn't be there for seven years in order or whatever the term is in oklahoma to be able to, to make an adverse possession claim. You mentioned allowable uses, and so when you mentioned the fact that you can sort of carve a, a specific, you don't, you don't have a, I mean, I know you have a template, but you don't have a, this is the only version of a conservation easement. So if the board wanted to go that route, um, the board would need to think about, I think, you know, at some point in the future, is, is there gonna be a time when the city, 20 years from now, might want to see recreational trails there, passive recreation, used a different term than, than, um, than passive recreation. But, um, you know, if you, you don't, you don't want to be so tied, I think, that no, no uses in the future can occur, but you don't want development to occur, I assume. It's, it's obviously up to the board. Uh, but I think you have to be cautious about how to write that because it is in perpetuity. And then the one thing, you mentioned the legal defense fund and all that, but there is a cost. So yeah. could you speak to that? Yes. Well, the, the cost is, is related to the stewardship of the land. So when we put land in perpetuity, and this even goes with private landowners, um, you know, they put a certain amount of money into a fund that allows us to monitor that property yearly, you know, staff time and dealing with property, the legal defense fund and all those things. That's put into an account and, and used, you know, hopefully we never use it all, of course, but... Um, that's used to help manage and, or monitor the property and enforce the easement that's in place. Am I saying that right, Pam? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because Pam's the expert, not really me, so and she needs to. And would you like, were you asking about specific numbers? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, possible, or at least yeah. a, a, a. So the ballpark, ballpark. Um, the number that we're discussing is $23,000, and of that, um, approximately 14 to 16 would go into the long term stewardship account. We grow that account with the goal of it being an interest generating account for our portfolio so that we that's how we show that we have the money you know for the annual monitoring and visits um a approximately 1500 to 2500 would go into the legal defense fund so that's kind of the two components of our long-term um, account management and then the rest would be used for the upfront costs the staff time attorney fees um, title commitments and all of the things that that go along with creating the easement. Madam Mayor. Yes. I, is that a one-time cost? 23,000 is a one-time cost, and then I'm assuming if any of that 14 to 16 in the long-term stewardship gets used, then it has to be replenished or? It's a one-time no. cost, um, and it the, repl the replenishment of that is the responsibility of the land trust. Okay. So we put it into the long-term account 
with the goal of not touching it. If we do need to touch it, it's up to us to replenish it. So it, it's a one-time cost due at the time of signing the easement. Okay. Oh, good. Madam Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Now, is that for each section we're talking about, or is that total 23000 That's total. We treat the property as one in the easement, even if they're not adjacent tracks. I mean, you can customize what's allowed on them each, but it's not, since it's not, you know, three or four separate easements, it's just counted as one. Anyone else? Then with that. So oh. oh, um, I think, you know, at some point the board just needs to give direction to staff with, if you, if you want us to, to pursue this with the Northwest Arkansas Land Trust, obviously there's a lot of due diligence that has to go in and, and title research. Um, but um, as we talked about, you know, versus selling the property to GRDA, uh, you asked us to look into the land trust option. And so that's, that's your option. So thank you, Madam Mayor and board. Thank you. And directors, no other questions or comments at this time? I'll just say I'm impressed. I didn't know how much they had or like 41 properties or the length of time they'd been around. So thank you. It's workshops to be informative, and this was definitely informative. So thank you. And thank you both for being here, and we appreciate the information. And I'm assuming then, directors, you will be letting Philip know, and if you have questions for him, you'll be letting him know that and giving him your information later on how you'd like for him to proceed. So with that, we will adjourn this workshop and Reconvene at 6.30 for our regular board meeting. Thank you. Call to order this regular meeting of the Salem Springs Board of Directors for January 17th, 2023. Roll call. Blair. Here. Miley. Here. Wiles. Here. Hunt. Here. Ristler. Here. Allen. Here. Carol. Here. At this time, if you all will please stand with me as Director Wiles leads us in prayer, and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Father, as we come before you this evening, we want to thank you for your goodness toward us. Thank you so much for the blessings we have each day. And Father, as we discuss the items brought before us this evening, I pray that we discuss these with respect, with clarity, uh, wisdom. And Father, no matter what we come up with, we just pray that it be in accordance with your will. Thank you so much again for all that you do for us each and every day. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> At this time, I would like to ask that anyone that has an electronic device, please silence that or turn that off so we don't have any disturbance during our meeting. And thank you for that. So <laughs> next on our agenda is public input. Madam Mayor. Yes. I would like to move that we move presentations to before public input tonight. We have a lot from the public here and I'd love to be able to 
to focus on the presentations at the beginning of the meeting and then get on to the public input if that's possible. Okay, so you would like to make that motion I've to made, do that? Yes. And do I, I have a second for that? Second. Roll call vote for that, please. Smiley. Yes. Wiles. Yes. Hunt. Yes. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carroll. Yes. Blair. Yes. Motion is approved, so we will begin with our presentations tonight. Uh, first, we will start with our recognition of the police department and officer Christopher Ramos and Director Rissler. Okay. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to read off something, and then Officer Ramos and Aubrey um, will come up and present a check um, to the Rotary Club. And so today we get to honor the Salem Springs Police Department. We get to recognize them for what they do for our community as a whole and what they do for each of us as individuals, even a six-year-old little girl. Recently, the public was able to hear about an incident that demonstrates the heart of our officers, a heart that shows their dedication and commitment to a little girl that lost her security. We all have our idea of security. For some, it's knowing our police are out there every day risking their lives so that we can live in a community safe from harm. For a six-year-old little for a six-year-old who has faced many medical issues, her security was in a stuffed bunny. This bunny had been with her through lung surgery, therapy, and all the scary stuff that comes with any medical issue. Our officers demonstrated that no matter how big or small we perceive a crime, they are committed to providing the best service possible. Please know 90% of the cases are, we have a 98% case closure rate. The national average is 32%. That tells you how hard our police department works. Because of the outpouring of support through love and prayers by our community, the Salem Springs Police Department was able to solve this crime. This, this community support demonstrates the character of our community, a community that comes together and loves one another through the hard times. Many citizens could relate what this six-year-old little girl was going through. To honor the Salem Springs Police Department, the Langford family, along with my family, are given $250 to two local organizations. These donations will be presented to each organization from Officer Christopher Ramos, who was just one of the officers instrumental in finding Bunny and Bunny's owner, Aubrey Brosh. The first organization is Kiwanis. The day that Bunny was found, I was meeting with two gentlemen from the public. In this meeting, the Kiwanis group was brought up and the gentleman identified what Kiwanis is about and how they support our community. As they were discussing what they do for the children, I thought how perfect it would be for them to receive a donation in honor of the Salem Springs Police Depar Department as a representation of a child like Aubrey. Kiwanis is about improving the world for children in every community. We pray this small donation helps continue their efforts here in Salem Springs. They did send an email and that they are not able to attend and instead of using my own words, I like to use other people's. So they said we will have to decline this invitation as we desire to maintain free of any political affiliations. And since um, they were not able to attend, a check will be mailed to them. The second organization is the Rotary Club. This organization is a service oriented group. They focus on many things. They try to do a lot of things for our community, like um, focus on creating a human trafficking free zone. And one focus in particular is they is providing resources to help fight the use of drugs. Their service isn't just for communities that currently have drug problems, but also for drug prevention. I find their organization is great representation of what the gentleman who took Bunny needs, as well as the continued prayers from the community. We believe the power of prayer can turn this individual's life around. I do want to identify that the Rotary Club will be utilizing this money for their healing garden. A plaque will include individuals or groups that donate to the garden. The Salem Springs Police Department will be included on this plaque in honor of this donation. The healing garden will be located beside the Parks and Recs office on University, on University Street. As identified by Mr. Church, it will, be quite, it will be a quiet place for the public to be able to go for healing of the heart and mind, especially for veterans and their families dealing with PTSD, and for those dealing with the loss of loved ones or those who just need a quiet place to go. If you would like to donate as an individual or group, please contact Stanley Church or any member, mem, 
member of the Rotary Club that you may know. They are also needing volunteers to help install this garden. So if we can have Officer Ramos and Aubrey come up to present a check to Stanley. <laughs> Stanley, on behalf of Salem Springs Police Department, I'd be honored to grant you with this check as a gift. Thank you so much. Thank you for your service. Glad you got your money back. Thank you. Thank you to the police department for everything you do. You do not know the difference you make in our community. Thank you, Lisa. And yes, once again, let me just reiterate how thankful we are for our police department. They, they do serve and protect us well, so thank you. Um, so next is the uh, 2022 fourth quarter reports. I believe that these were requested at the last director's meeting by uh, Carol or Director Reed, Carol. And uh, so at this time, we will have those reports. The first one will be from the History Museum, and I believe Mary Nolan will be presenting that. Next, we'll have our Main Street Salem Springs, and I believe Scott Jones will be doing that for us tonight. Uh, their director is ill and unable to be here. And next will be from the Chamber of Commerce, and that will be Arthur Holbert. So as Mary, as you finish, then if Scott, will you go ahead and come up, and then after Scott, Arthur. Mary, you have the floor. Thank you. I am Mary Nolan, and I am the director of the Salem Springs Museum, and very happy to be here this evening with all of the directors and Mayor Judy Nation. Thank you for this opportunity to come, and I'm just really thrilled that I get to follow that great act that was just before me. But um, just a little bit of the highlights that the museum was able to have last year. We just finished displaying the paintings from the Heart of America Artists Association, the plein air event that was held in October. There were 20 paintings on display from November until January 6th. So these are individual artists in town that went downtown and picked a site and uh, created a beautiful painting. During the last quarter of the year, there were 169 visitors to the museum, which is up a little bit for us. And most of them are from Arkansas, but we are getting people from 10 different states. I think um, maybe the connection there might be John Brown University as they bring in quite a few visitors and parents. The two main fundraisers this year were very successful. In June, over 90 folks enjoyed a perfect afternoon at Walnut Grove Farm. It was an absolutely beautiful setting, an 1880 home, fantastic food, and friends from near and far enjoyed reconnecting. For Susie and Ruthie, who, who live out there, it was a family reunion, as many people know them from long ago. In October, we were able to have Tap Into History meet the founders. And this was a, a great success, thanks to the Center for the Arts, Park House Kitchen and Bar, and Main Street. They all made this a great success. 60 attended to hear from our founding fathers, including, there was a woman or two there, I think Belle Starr made a, an appearance, the founders that were sharing with the audience, um, they learned about Simon Sager, Keldin Gunter, Nancy Ward Gunter, John Hargrove, Fred Bartell, and appearance by Bell Starr, and that just kept things interesting. But, um, so if you don't know any of those names, uh, I expect to see you at the museum in the next week or two. So, in 2023, we do have a new contract, and we thank you very much for that this year. In the <clears throat> Excuse me. In the coming months, there will be receptions and presentations. Um, we have two artists that we have contacted, and as soon as we set those dates, we will let you know about that. Um, at Shiloh Museum has a staff member named Rachel, Rachel Whitaker, and she will offer a presentation of Quilting in the Ozarks, and that will be during Dogwood Quilters Annual Show in April and May, which is in conjunction with the Dogwood Festival. So last year, there were over 40 quilter, quilts on display at the museum from every size and description imaginable. Rachel can also present other um, 
presentations. One is called Hollywood in the Ozarks, and we're looking at that for maybe March around Oscar time. Now, Oscar, she also has one called Out by the Woodpile, Outhouses. Yeah, I don't know. That might be fun. The membership drive is gearing up, and um, memberships are from March to February, so we will be sending those letters out very soon. We have over 170 names on our membership list, but we are looking to clean up that list a little bit and get people to either reconnect and find out those that have maybe moved on and are no longer in the community. I would like to mention our board members that we're very thankful for. Alan Lamb, Jan Simmons McGurk, Carla Wasson, Missy Morris, and David Jones. And we would welcome any additional board members also. We could use some more, and we love new ideas, and we also could use them to share the workload. We're looking at continuing the Heritage Festival that was spearheaded by a local family over the last two years. However, that event takes an awful lot of volunteers, and so we'll know soon if uh, we can really provide that for you this year. And we are working on a job description to fill the responsibilities that was outlined in our contract to help with website, Facebook, and programming. The museum will be participating in Main Street for Girls' Night Out in March. An, ex an exhibit about the Gunter family is now in progress. So we're very much looking for towards 2023. And uh, thank you again. And if anybody has any questions, I'm open for that. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, Stacy does, as the mayor mentioned, send her regrets. She's been under the weather now for several days and is on the mend, but I talked to her this morning and she was definitely still weak. So you get me tonight. Uh, my name is Scott Jones and I am the farmer's market manager for uh, Main Street Salem Springs. And so I wanted to share with you uh, the report that Stacy wrote for uh, you guys for 2022 and looking forward to 2023. Uh, throughout the year, we worked alongside our downtown business owners to produce three successful girls' night out events, which are hosted quarterly in March, June, and September. Uh, GNO is an event where participating businesses stay open later in the evening. You know, as a former business owner, I can tell you, you know, it's nice to have shoppers downtown in the evening after they're off work. Uh, and so these events are very well attended from five to eight. Ladies come downtown, enjoy an evening of shopping and dining. And uh, we continued our reputation of being an award-winning organization. Main Street was awarded a 2022 Award of Excellence for Outstanding Retail Promotion for our Girls' Night Out series from Main Street, Arkansas, as well as the 2022 Award of Excellence for Outstanding Public Art Project in a single installation. And that was for the, main, the East Main Street mural which is installed on the Simmons Building. With the help of our partners at the museum, we produced our quarterly minute and history videos. We hosted 48 farmers markets through, through our outdoor and online market. We had about 30 vendors throughout the year in both the online and the in-person formats. Uh, we had an average of around 11 vendors each week. If you came, you know it, it can fluctuate wildly but we averaged 11 per week at the outdoor market. Those vendors offered a variety of products from locally grown and raised pork and beef to produce, artisan baked goods, and crafts. Our market participates in the Double Your Dollar program, which allows SNAP and senior voucher recipients to match their spending dollar for dollar. Our program this year matched over $3,000, thanks to a grant from UAMS. All told, throughout the year, our vendors did a total of $76,000 in sales. The market hosted six Power of Produce events on our monthly Kids Day. The Power of Produce empowers young people to make healthy food choices through product sampling and visiting with the farmers. We also, on those days, have young entrepreneurs who get to do booths at the uh, farmer's market and sort of test out the market and see what it's like to have a business. Local nonprofits also come like the Asylum Springs Museum, Beautiful Lives, and others. Children who register for the program are eligible to receive power of produce bucks to spend on fruits or veggies of their choosing from the farmers. The farmer's market also brought back the samples of the season, and we held six cooking demonstrations using products that can be purchased at the market. The videos from that uh, can be found on our Facebook page, so take a look at those, and you can find out how to make some yummy recipes using our farmer's market products. 
Uh, we hosted a successful main event fundraiser at the Park House. We awarded four businesses building improvement grants for exterior facade improvements and signage. We hosted a successful homegrown festival in October with approximately 3,000 visitors attending the event. If you've lived here for a while, you know that's homecoming weekend. Seems like every year at least one of those days is cold and rainy. Last year, we got two beautiful days for which we were very thankful. We had our largest festival yet with 70 vendors. Local businesses that were open experienced increased sales from prior years and the vendors that attended the festival reported successful sales as well. October also brings Shoptober Saturdays to downtown where music is hosted on the Fat Tire Loading Dock every Saturday to provide a festive atmosphere while everyone is outside enjoying the crisp fall weather, shopping and dining. At the end of October, we had the famous downtown trick-or-treat event, which is hosted by two amazing downtown business owners, Luke Davis and Heather Lanker. And if I may break from the report for just a moment, uh, there is a misperception that we failed to advertise that event. Our report includes some data on our Facebook campaigns for these different events, including the fact that our post about the downtown trick-or-treat was the most seen post for 2022. November brought one of the community's favorite events, Holiday Open House. Our retail shops opened on a Sunday afternoon to kick off the holiday shopping season, and then November finished up with Small Business Saturday. In December, we hosted our annual window decorating contest in conjunction with the downtown Christmas parade. Everyone loves walking through our beautiful downtown and checking out the window displays. We worked alongside the Heritage League to promote the parade and the window decorating contest simultaneously. Looking ahead to this next year, 2023, will be filled with the same great events plus a few more. We're partnering with the Chamber of Commerce to bring a brand new event to town, Fourth Fridays. These will be held May to October. We will also be hosting a few new small events, so watch our social media or pick up an event card the next time you're in a shop downtown. We're also hosting a Her Entrepreneur Journey, small business funding options with Martha Londigan on January 23rd at the library. The registration link is on our Facebook page and is open to all small businesses. We are proud to be working alongside our downtown businesses and proud of all the accomplishments made over the years with the help and support of our community partners, the City of Salem Springs, the Chamber of Commerce, and Museum. We look forward to continuing to serve you, our community, in 2023. At this time I'm done. If you have any questions, I will do my best. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Thank Thank you, Madam Mayor, City Board. It's great to be with you guys tonight. Um, basically, we were asked to give a little presentation for the last three months and over the last year, and I'll do my best for it and be available for questions. I guess uh, most recently, about three or four weeks ago, we, we did complete a $200 million RFI for uh, a large business considering coming to the community. A lot of the stuff that we do, we can't exactly talk about, but that was one that was completed about three or four weeks ago. Um, over the last 36 months, we've helped about 38 businesses get started inside the chamber. Um, we did another one this morning. We have another one this coming Friday. We average help starting a new business about every month. So with the federal ID number, Secretary of State, things like that. Um, we've been very involved with um, helping to represent uh, the Silent Springs Chamber of Commerce according to our contract uh, with the Northwest Council, the Arcan Arkansas Economic Development Commission, the Northwest Arkansas Economic Development District, and, um, and one of the things that uh, we're actually working on is I have to leave tonight and drive to Little Rock for a 7 a.m. meeting tomorrow. We're meeting with 30 legislators. We just started a third congressional district caucus. So we'll be meeting with 20 or 30 legislators every week for the whole time that they're in session. So myself and one other person have been asked to help facilitate uh, uh, speakers uh, to represent all of uh, Northwest Arkansas. So we're gonna try to represent Silent Springs interest because one of the Silent Springs Chamber of Commerce missions is, is to promote, to educate, to advocate, and to connect. And part of the advocacy is at the state and, and federal legislative level. So we're excited to do that. Another very significant thing that we've recently done is we've, um, I was able to fill out the incorporation paperwork for the Western Benton County Partnership. It's a new 501c3 that we're starting. Uh, right now I am the uh, state and federal grants a chairman of it and also the the chairman of economic development for it it's kind of a, been dreamed up by uh, uh, mr mark simmons 
but basically what it is is we're working on economic development, education, uh, different initiatives to help benefit the 59 corridor so that we have better representation on the western end of Benton County. Uh, for a lot of the things that we think in terms of grants and funding for education, child care, uh, workforce development. Uh, so we, I filled that paperwork out there and we're working on a 501c3 there. So that's going to be pretty significant uh, for us there. And basically that's a collaboration with uh, Sulphur Springs, Gravit, Gentry, Decatur, Silent Spring. So it's much like a Northwest Council except for the 59 corridor instead of the 49 corridor. So beautiful things are going to happen with that. And the beautiful thing is that Silent Springs is uniquely positioned uh, with the chamber as like an axis or a fulcrum to where we have the involvement for the 49 corridor as well as the 59 corridor. Um, the chamber also helps do the Silent Springs community guides every year. So we basically distribute those, help with tourism of that. Um, I guess in the last December, we did help raise over $90,000 to help raise or save the golf course. Um, we've been involved with some tourism promotion. Um, and then uh, I guess most recently around Christmas, we helped uh, facilitate in collaboration with the, the, the city board of directors, the Holly Jolly Christmas, which is a citywide house decorating contest. So that was good. Another thing we felt real good, I'm, I'm glad to see you guys really honor the, the police department too. So we're fortunate to be able to raise about $4,000 for bleed kits. Um, we did that in our last quarter as well too. Um, you know, it's kind of like playing baseball. You don't always get, uh, you know, on base and sometimes you strike out. But one thing that took a lot of our time this last year is I worked on a, uh, a $2 million grant and presented to um, uh, Arkansas Workforce Development. We were working on doing nursing throughout the state of Arkansas and presented that. It was a, we were, I was part of a shark tank and we made it through all three levels to the final one. And basically they said they liked the idea, but they thought I didn't ask for enough money. So I asked for two million and they said we should ask for four million. So long story short, uh, uh, it was a good exercise. Uh, you advocate, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but we definitely put Salem on the map from that aspect. Um, moving quickly, um, we help work with uh, businesses and growth strategies. Uh, we've done some polling for the Salem Springs City Board at their request. One of the things I'm proud of, we help manage uh, DiscoverSilom.com uh, website. That's something that uh, Main Street, the city, and the chamber used to pay an outside vendor to do. So we absorbed that, and it's able to save money for each entity. And we ran the metrics uh, three days ago, and we've had over 40,000 visitors uh, this last year on that. So very pleased with that. Um, we help host monthly meetings with the City of Salem, JBU, Salem Springs School, and the hospital. Uh, one thing I'm proud of, too, is that we help facilitate the Women and Minority Scholarship uh, Fund. So we've been able to raise about $25,000 for Women and Minority Scholarship Funds, and, and it gives them some of the opportunities for marketing and connection and no expense to the business owners. Um, let me see. We've started doing uh, free Spanish interpretation services. You don't have to be a member of the chamber to get that. So it's just available to any, any business in the community. Like I said, you don't have to be a member of the chamber. We're here to do it. I know that we did, I guess, advanced physical therapy last week, but so that is available to everyone. So we're proud of that. I have uh, one thing we've been asked to do that we've been doing is working on collaborative relationships with NWTI and NWAC uh, to try to get them more involved in the area. Um, one, one thing that was I thought was really good is that uh, about two months ago, we, we had uh, two HR roundtables. And we were able to bring in a NWTI and the Northwest Council. And, and what they've got are all these educational programs that are free to anyone that, that wants to be a part of. Like you can get your CL, CDL license for free. And I know the city of Silent Springs was struggling to find a CDL driver. So we had an HR roundtable with, with the HR manager from the city of Siloam and about, 30 different, or about 20 different businesses there. And we're able to get some connections there so they can get free CDL training. Uh, we did some candidate forums, back to school breakfast, honors grad luncheons. Uh, this last week, about three days ago, we did a Benton County After Hours. So basically, instead of all the people from Salem going to the 49 Corridor, uh, we had about 250 people from uh, east from the 49 Corridor came over to the Cherokee Casino. And, and in that, we met a couple of uh, businesses that, through that, they said they wanted to expand to Silent Springs. You never know. It's just relationships uh, where we go from there, too. So we can go on and on, but I think that's it. As far as future goals, I want to make sure I address that. I want to make sure that Silent Springs is a community of choice for anyone wanting to start a business, relocate a business. Uh, we're on the radar. Um, just like I participated in a shark tank, you know, for the workforce development, uh, the Silent Springs Chamber of Commerce is working to create a shark tank for this year and hopefully be able to, to give out $10,000 in, 
and that was ten thousand dollars in in prizes this next year so that's our goal to be able to do that so we may do that through sponsorships um and then as as uh, main street said we are working on doing a a uh, fourth quarter um fourth fridays i'm sorry fourth quarter is what my church used to do after a football game but fourth fridays uh, and I think that's going to be really good. A, a city board member had that idea, kind of like what Bentonville's doing. So it's going to be a, a collaborative event there, too. Um, and I think that wraps it up. But really, the, the impact that we're doing, um, we're being able to represent Silent Springs, not just in Silent Springs. Um, Northwest Arkansas is growing, as you guys know. So if we don't influence our surroundings, it's going to influence us. So I say that's one of the primary roles of the chamber is that basically we are – we're actually helping to influence the 49 corridor and across the state. And that's why that will be in, in Little Rock in about four hours. So thank you. All. Available for questions. Sorry if that was long. So, Director, since these reports were some information that you all had asked for, do you have any comments or questions at this time for any of these three that have presented? Madam Mayor, I'll just yes. say the, the tap into history was a fantastic event this year for a very historic home, and Parkhouse did a fantastic job of proving how great of a, a catering they can do. Uh, with so many different varieties of food, and, and uh, I, I was really super impressed with them. And, and then I just was going to say, Arthur, on Discover Siloam, is it Discover Siloam or Discover Siloam Springs? Dot com. It's, it's just Siloam. Okay. I just want people watching on TV to make sure they know which one it is. Thank you. Thank you, David. Anyone else? And a mayor. Yes, Reed. I just wanted to um, point out, I'm sure we're all here and we all heard everything, but to hear how the three different groups uh, come alongside one another and <coughs> other local business, the cooperation that was uh, worked out through the, each one and the collaboration where they worked together. Uh, and it was working together and not just for here, but you, you, you heard about the reaching out into uh, the 59 corridor, uh, even into the state of Arkansas. And I, I just really want to say I appreciate how each of the groups uh, work individually, but also uh, work together and to come alongside our local business to make us who we are. And thank you. Madam Mayor. Yes. Mayor. Director Carroll just stole the words out of my mouth. Um, but I, I will go ahead and repeat them because I had the opportunity to do that. Um, but it's not just from this report tonight. I went back over the last year of several reports um, and was just impressed by by that collaboration. I saw in a number of times the the report mentioned the, the ways these three entities work together. And it's what I've said the last couple of meetings. It, the three entities may work for and with different people, but they also work together for the better of our community. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Mindy. Anyone else? If not, thank you all very much for being here and for giving us your reports. <clears throat> with that, we will move on to the public input. Uh, at this time, the public may address the Board of Directors regarding any item that is not listed on their regular agenda. And if you would like to speak to the board, uh, we need you to give us your name, your address, and you will have three minutes to address the board. I would ask that we all remember that whenever you are making your remarks, um, we ask that you make those uh, to the mayor and not to the board. Uh, no person other than the directors uh, and the person having the floor shall be permitted to enter into any discussions without permission of the mayor. No questions shall be directed to a director or city staff member except through the mayor, and each speaker will be limited to the three minutes. I would ask that all of us remember that um, we are all a part of this community to have respect for each other and to make sure that um, we do not violate each other's rights to be able to be heard 
and uh, remember we have respect for each other. Um, so with that, I will open the floor to anyone that would like to come to the podium and speak to the board on anything that is not on our regular agenda. If there is no one here that would like to do that, I would ask then if there's anyone here that would like to address the board on an item that is on our consent agenda. There is not, so we will move on to our consent agenda. Madam Mayor. Yes, Mindy. <laughs> I want to address the elephant that's in the room. I think we have a lot of people here tonight that are here to talk about Main Street one way or the other. As it is right now, the contract with Main Street is on. So just to clarify, it is on. If we need to make any changes, make any different decisions, I feel like we should do that now and not make the public wait for the entire evening to see if something is going to be different. Madam Mayor? Yes, Lisa. Can we get an um, explanation of how it's on? Uh, by virtue of the fact that the mayor vetoed our decision, can I answer that question? <laughs> my understanding, my understanding is that by virtue of the fact that the mayor vetoed the decision not to renew the contract when that decision was made by a three to two vote on December 6th, let me go back. On December 6th, we were asked to uh, approve the contract um, for Main Street. It was on the consent agenda. Um, it, Director Allen asked for it to be brought off the consent agenda so that we could discuss that. He expressed some concerns. Um, when the vote came about, the vote was three in favor of continuing the contract, two against continuing the contract. Because the vote required four for approval and two board members were missing, the vote, the contract renewal actually failed. So when we left December 6th, there was no contract renewal for Main Street. The mayor then overturned that board's decision through the state statute that our city attorney found. Okay. We had the opportunity to override that veto. A motion was made to override the veto. It was not seconded, so it failed. Therefore, the contract stands. That's my understanding. If it's something different, we need to know. Main Street needs to know. It's been on again, off again. It's only fair that they know whether they're going to get this third of their budget through this contract. So I feel like there are a lot of people here to discuss this. Um, I feel like it's only fair we go ahead and just make sure everyone leaves tonight on the same page. Madam Mayor? Yes. So we got the AML opinion, and it does not agree with our city attorney. And so AML are the ones that will have to protect us or take this to court. So the AML did not agree with our city attorney. He said he was leaving it up to our city attorney. So I guess this is up to the city attorney. If you're going to say that you're going to go against AML, who said that the veto is not valid, so where do you stand? Madam Mayor, uh, yes, I uh, did uh, read the, the opinion that came down from uh, Arkansas Municipal League. Uh, I do not agree with their conclusion. Uh, I believe that they uh, um, are uh, misreading the state statute, but uh, that's just a difference between attorneys. We, we read it differently. Um, I, I take the uh, words of the statute literally. They do not. Um, so that's, uh, that's the conflict that, uh, that we have. Okay. So I'm going to present two things. One, um, Mayor Judy's um, email or letter to us, it identified one law. You knew that there were two, and you didn't identify two. You didn't give her that guidance, that legal guidance, that there were two. And the second one is the one AML says, you're, you're wrong. You're basically wrong. And so 
And then we get an email from the city administrator that says, by now I'm sure that you all have re read AML's opinion regarding the mayor's veto authority. Per Director Rissler's request, how to fix this, and let me define what I mean by how to fix this, is how do we apologize to the public because they felt like they were deceived. So whether this was intentional or not, we have to follow the law. And the difference between one city attorney and AML is they have a whole team of attorneys and they identified in there that they reviewed the videos, they reviewed what I had to say, and they agreed we that it, it, the veto does not stand. That is not legal. And so Philip suggested that we go back for a vote. What, so how are we saying that that contract's legal? If I may, to clarify, Philip suggested that we go, you go back to a vote based on AML's direction of, to answer your question of how to fix it. So it wasn't my decision or my suggestion. I, based on your question of how to fix it, I asked AML, how is the best way to fix this? Uh, I don't believe that AML is saying it's illegal. They have a different opinion than the city attorney. They said that in these matters, they defer to the city attorney. Okay. Um, but the idea, at least from AML, AML's perspective, was if there was a vote uh, of the board, either up or down, then that would settle this matter and the board could move on. Okay. So... So instead of voting on the contract, because we did not defund Main Street, we voted not to extend the contract. So I want to get the terminology appropriate. Secondly, can we not say, then let's vote as directors if the veto stands or not? Because now you're in a position, I, I, don't, I don't even think it's rejecting the veto. It's not rejecting the veto. It's saying, are we going to bend the law every time we don't like what happens. And I, I can see you're stressed about this, Philip, because I, you've been put in a position. I'm not stressed about this, Director Ressler. I believe that in trying to discuss where the best avenue to resolve this, AML found the best path. It, it's as simple as that. To revote on the issue. To revote on it. And, and that it could easily be done, as I said in my email to you and the rest of the board, that um, a AML asked me, well, why don't you just put it back on the agenda? And I said, I, I'm not going to do that because there's clearly differences of opinion on the board. And so oh. <coughs> the, the idea that AML suggested was that the board, somebody make a motion to put it back on the agenda. We'd put it back on the agenda at a next board meeting and then the board could vote it up or down. And then that would put the issue to rest. Well, why are we allowing one director to say that, that, that it's legal still? Madam Mayor, I, I don't think I said it was still legal. I said it still stands. I, I, I don't know stands. the legality of it. My understanding is that it stands. I and I don't, I've, I've not heard anything that says that it doesn't stand. I've heard the concerns that you've expressed, but I haven't heard that I it doesn't stand. I still don't understand stand. how it stands. It hasn't been ruled um, illegal. It's a difference of opinion from two different attorneys. Um, the mayor vetoed it. The board chose not to overturn that veto. And based on that, I signed the contract. Um, and so the contract is signed. And unless the board uh, chooses to uh, either, I guess, overturn the veto or vote uh, the contract down, if the board chooses to put it back on the agenda, then that contract would be void. I will do what the other directors want to do. But I will have to say, this seems underhanded and conniving. And our, our citizens deserve better. They deserve better than this. When we, no, you let me finish, Jay. 
When we have any other issue, we go to AML and ask them. For some reason, we didn't go to AML this time. We waited and pushed it through, and the comment was made that, well, the attorneys would have to figure it out. Yeah, let's use the citizens' money for tax, their tax dollars on attorney fees. How about we follow the rules? And next time, ask AML, because they are the ones that will be representing us in court. But this seems conniving and underhanded, and we ask our citizens to follow the law, we should do the same thing. And we knew there were two laws, but we only presented one of them. That seems underhanded to me. Those two things make it look conniving and underhanded. So Madam Mayor, um, just to briefly address this, um, I, I just wanna say that I, I agree with AML's uh, assessment that a vote would be in order to cure this as long as there are reasonable interpretations of this particular law that vary, there will be a question about it, and that does increase the risk that there could be some adverse action initiated against the city. Um, all the acts of the mayor and board are presumed to be illegal, and are, are presumed, pardon me, presumed to be legal unless and until they're overturned by some higher authority, such as a court, that has not happened here. So, yes, as uh, um, I, I, I agree that the matter, the contract stands as is, but again, as long as there is this question out there that um, can be put to rest by simply putting it to a vote, up, down, amend, whatever the board wants to do, that that is the prudent course of action that the, uh, the board should take to settle the matter and move on. And that's my opinion. Madam Mayor. Yes, David. Um, I'll just say I was a little surprised to see Philip's email <coughs> with the AML uh, response about putting this to another vote uh, because this occurred in 2022 and we had board rules that applied to 2022 that said the only way this could be reconsidered is by the retaining by the prevailing side and that it had to be no later than the next meeting or the contract is signed, which both of those have occurred. Uh, so even the implication that we should revote, in my opinion, is a moot point. The contract has been signed by both parties, um, and I don't think anyone has the authority to bring this back for another vote. Director Allen, so do you think based, that up, based upon our previous minute or uh, board rules? What? So you think the contract stands? I, however, it got to that contract. I mean, I believe the mayor was supposed to sign the contract by state law. Um, but I don't. I, I just don't quite get why this would be necessary to revote right now. Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, so my understanding, I, I feel a lot the way Dr. Dr. Sorry, Director Rissler does. Um, I think the mayor was given poor legal advice and um, that the veto wasn't legal. Our governor can't veto a non-action. The President of the United States cannot veto a non-action, but our mayor can. Um, yeah, that doesn't seem right. And my understanding is, too, that it's the mayor's job to sign the contracts that the city administrator can sign for buying supplies and things like that, but contracts are signed by the mayor. So I'm, I'm new to this, but I'm having a hard time seeing how a lot of this is legal. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, Madam Mayor, yes, I, will, David. I will clarify. I, I don't believe 
that, and and in fact, if you look at the December 6th meeting, I, I stated, or the December 20th meeting, um, I stated that I didn't think the mayor letter was legal or valid for two reasons. You cannot veto something that did not happen. And secondly, the mayor cannot, through a veto, institute something being forth to spend money. It's just impossible. Um, so I do think the legal advice that was given was wrong. Um, I believe there's not just the city law that could have been pertained, but there were two state laws. There was not just the one about the word decisions that seemed to be the basis for allowing a veto of a non-action, but there was another state law that said specifically a mayor can uh, uh, allow something to be a, um, adopted or they can veto, uh, but it must be passed with a majority of four votes by the board. That is a separate state law within. So I don't think for Jay to say that these were two complementary laws, they're not complementary when Jay interprets decisions to mean a non-event. So I do believe that when it gets down to the brass tacks of the actions, I believe they were done illegally, yes. And That's then, why I asked in the meeting who wrote the letter, because I thought it sounded like a legal letter advising um, to get around something. Uh, and I can assure you, if if um, I, I'm someone who needs time to think about something, and we had until the December 20th meeting to reconsider, and the mayor veto preempted that. Madam Mayor? Yes, Lisa. So do we have the right to vote that Jay's opinion of that is a, that our, that contract's legal? Can, do we have the right to vote to say, we do not think that's contract's legal? I think you have the right to vote to not approve the Main Street contract, which would be under the assumption that you're that was uh, one option disagreeing with the city. Of, city well, because we had some rules, you know, we in January of 2022, we bought these brought these policies and procedures in front of a, the, the citizens, and we said, you know, we're going to vote on these, and it was unanimous. We're going to follow these rules. These are rules that we agreed to follow, and we ask our citizens to follow rules. But we can't follow rules because we're, we're above the law? We're above the rules? No, we're not. We voted these and given the community confidence that we were going to follow these rules. And in the rules, it says that she cannot veto something that is a dead issue. It says clearly that it has to be something that was approved. It was not approved. So we're going against our own rules. And then we say, well, the only people that can bring it back are the two that were, that voted against it. But then now we're trying to say, well, no, we're going to bend another rule from 2020. We're going to bend another policy from our procedures that we voted, we told the citizens that we were going to follow. And now we want to bend the rule again and say, okay, we're not going to follow it because this does not fit our agenda. When do we stop bending the rules? and doing what's right for the citizens. Madam Mayor, with, yes. with, all, due, with all due respect, um, a matter can only be reconsidered by, bring, by, bring, by being brought up by someone who was on the prevailing side of the vote. And that either has to be per Robert's rules during the same meeting or per our procedural rules either that meeting or the meeting after. After that period has elapsed, per Robert's rules, a, any matter may be 
put up for a renewal vote by anyone, whether they were on the prevailing side or not. And we are now in that period where any board member can bring up a failed action or a successful one for reconsideration. Um, and that, that has not been in the rules. That is, that is per Robert's rules. And um, I can provide the uh, citation if you give me just a moment. But uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's chapter 10 of, of Robert's rules. Um, so that, that would not be, does not require any, any special consideration or any bending of rules to put it to another vote. Madam Mayor? Yes, David. This board has a resolution of board rules and regulations that it votes every January, every year, most of them written by Director or Administrator Patterson. Um, and we don't go by Robert's Rules of Order. We go by the rules that we have instituted. And if this is the basis that Jay is deciding for this to come up for a revote, then I would have thought the proper consideration would have been to at least provide us the copy of what he's reading from. We've never heard of this. We've never seen this. We have specific delineation in our board rules of how to handle reconsideration, period. It doesn't say later you can have a renewal. There's nothing in our board rules about that. So once again, Jay is bending the law or pulling a new law or deciding to disregard the law as to whatever he's been ordered to do. And it's not right. I, I, I cannot believe that anyone believes that this can be revoted. I would think everybody would be happy to just, and I can, sure, I can assure you, It's not fair for this type of stuff right here to be distributed dishonesty on city or Facebook page, put it businesses downtown, and make dishonest statements as if all of these events are going to go away. Main Street does not live or die by the, budget, by the contract of the city of Salem Springs. So to make people believe that downtown trick-or-treat homegrown festival, historic building restoration, girls' night out, and farmer's market are just going to disappear is dishonest and misleading to the public, and it's not right. And in my opinion, even though I was told by several people at the chamber event last week that people with the, that are associated with Main Street, that they didn't have anything to do with this, they most certainly could have taken these away from the businesses and said, you're not helping the situation between the city and Main Street by putting nonsense like this out, because that's what this is. Whoever was responsible for it, you've hurt Main Street, folks. You've not helped Main Street. Roll your eyes, you roll your eyes. You've hurt Main Street with this, because it's nonsense. Madam Mayor. Yes, Mindy. Perhaps that wasn't the best way to garner support for Main Street, um, but two wrongs don't make a right. And in my opinion, um, it sends a poor message to our community and to people looking at moving into this community if we make a decision that appears that we're not supporting Main Street. Um, and I think, um, not continuing that contract could send that message. I think the same message would be sent if we said that we wouldn't continue the contract with Chamber. We all agree that the Chamber does a lot of good for the community. Um, if, if we didn't continue the contract with the museum, same thing. I, I think it, it can leave a negative feeling with people that are looking at this community. So maybe that wasn't the best way to garner support. Um, but is that a reason not to support? Is that a reason for us to make a decision not to support Main Street through this contract. Bottom line for me is I, 
we all need to leave tonight with the same understanding, and that's why I brought it up. It's not my decision to make as to whether the, the veto was, um, was legal or not, um, but my understanding was that we had the opportunity to override that veto, and we didn't, and that meant that that contract stood, and that's what my understanding was of it, and I think that's probably what others understood, but then we started getting inundated with these emails in support of Main Street from citizens in our community. We talk about what citizens want, but we heard from a lot of citizens in our community. My last count was up to 90, which I believe was more emails than we got when we were talking about raising the utility rates. We got a lot of support from people about utility. Or we got a lot of emails from people asking us not to raise utility rates. I love hearing from people. I was glad to get those emails, however they came about, but I think at one time, we thought the contract was going to continue, and, and then there was talk that it might not continue, and so I just want us to leave on the same page tonight. We need to be in agreement. Everybody needs to understand what's happening. Main Street needs to know if they're going to get their funding. And Mayor? Yes, Lisa. So my question still stands that I never got a direct answer to. I ask a direct question, and I expect a direct answer. <coughs> my question is, how can we as directors, since we are the leading body of this community, how can we vote whether we think that contract is legal or not? And it's a four, it takes four votes to vote if it's legal or not legal. Well, you can put it on the agenda and you can take that vote. It wouldn't change or alter anything. I mean, it's not It's not, not going to change not, the contract? No. Why? because um, you're not a judicial body. I mean, you can, you can vote to, to turn down, the, to cancel the contract, but voting, whether it's legal or not, that would just be one more opinion to add to the mix. It, point of order, point of order. Did I just hear our attorney say we are not an official body? Judicial, judicial body. Okay. Judicial. judicial body, okay, excuse me. So hard, to, hard to understand what's happening I, here. I believe right? that was the intent of AML's recommendation, was that if you're of the opinion that AML's interpretation of the state law is, if you're of the opinion that that is the correct interpretation, then simply vote the contract down, and then that solves the matter. I think that's where AML was trying to get to. It wasn't a question of who's legal or not legal, because only a court can decide that. It was a question of there's two different opinions, illegal opinions in this matter, and in order to resolve this was to have a full vote, excuse me, full vote of the board and vote it up or down. And I, I want to be very clear as to the other issue that was brought up. In the powers of the city administrator under 14-48-117, the city administrator shall have the following powers and duties. And one of those says that he or she may contract for and purchase or issue purchase authorizations for supplies, materials, and equipment for various offices, departments, and agencies of the city. And he or she may contract for or authorize contracts for services rendered to the city. Uh, this is subject to establishing uh, a, a uh, an amount that the city administrator can extend without board approval. So, historically speaking, um, in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, the board appropriated monies and the city administrator signed these contracts. They, th we've done it in years past. So, to say that the city administrator did not have the authority to sign that contract uh, it's very clear <coughs> that that city administrator does subject to his spending his or her spending limit So I don't think that's the question at hand. I think the question at hand is does this board wish to um, Go publicly and put it on the record that you're either support of the contract uh, With a four to three vote or you don't support the contract with a four to three vote and then that ends the issue and and you and we and the public and Main Street can move on. So we need to make a motion to put it on. I, 
in my in my commentary, um, my email to you and the rest of the board, I requested that the board make a motion to put it on the February 7th agenda, and that that be the you know with that passage I would do it. You could put it on tonight's agenda with a supermajority vote. You, you could move to put it on tonight's agenda with a, a two-thirds vote. Um, my idea was. I didn't know the public was going to be here tonight. I figured it was best to let everybody be up front and, and transparent about it. But you can, with a with a, a five you know five votes, two thirds vote, you can put it on the agenda tonight, and then you can make the motion, and it will go up or down. I don't like how this has played out. I think it's a lot of it. I um, because I do like to follow the law, and I'm sorry for those people that have come to me and said, can't you just bend the rules just this one time? No, I don't want to bend the rules. I follow the law. I expect the citizens of our community to follow the law, and I'm going to follow the law. So I will make a motion that we put it on the agenda tonight. We have a motion to place the Main Street contract on the agenda for tonight's meeting. Do I have a second for that motion? I second. We have a motion and a second to place on the agenda for tonight's discussion and vote. Roll call. Wiles. No. Hunt. No. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carol. No. Blair. Yes. Miley. No. So do we make a motion to put it on the next agenda? Because we gotta resolve this. It's not fair to Main Street. It's not fair to the board. We gotta resolve this. Madam Mayor? Yes. Reed. Are you complete? Director Rissler? Are you are you I guess through? that I guess I ask a question, do we? So uh, yes, you can make another motion to place it on the next agenda if if you so choose, if my understanding of what he's saying is correct. And I believe, if that is correct, that it only takes four votes to put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Is that correct? correct. Yes. Okay. <coughs> then, oh, no, I'll let oh, Okay. Madam Mayor, um, concerning this, I, I feel like the le legality has uh, stepped in, in front of uh, the true meaning of what, what we're here about. We're here about Main Street, Salem Springs, and what they do for our community. And uh, it seems we're making it much harder than, than I was envisioning in it. Um, if we, as the Board of Directors, would like to see Main Street Salem Springs funded for their $35,000 for the year of 2023, if we're in unity there, what can we do as a team to make that happen? And if, the, if we can bring it back up uh, at our next meeting, uh, to where we can, uh, as a group, see what we want to decide for Main Street Siloam uh, and the work that they do in this community. Uh, I'm, I'm for that. But I, I'd like to put some focal point back on with, with Main Street. That's who we're talking about. Yes, we can, we can talk semantics. We can talk legality. But when it gets down to it, it's Main Street and, and what they do and, and the value that they have to this community. And I'd like to see us as directors work together uh, to make it happen or to not. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Mayor. Yes. Uh, who was asking? Uh, me. Okay, Carol. I was not at the meeting when this was voted down. I could not believe that it was voted down. I do believe there's some personal issues that go back to Main Street a long ways. I support Main Street. I want that on the record. <clears throat> and I think we're doing a disservice to our community by not supporting Main Street. Main Street isn't just Main Street. It's not just downtown. Okay. So, Carol, go, go ahead. I wish we could resol resolve this in a very simple matter. But I still think there are some personal issues 
that go back a long ways. But if it takes us putting this on the agenda for the next meeting, I would like to see that happen. Madam Mayor. Yes, Lisa. I don't have an issue with Main Street. I used to have an, a business down on Main Street. I have shopped a lot down Main Street. I have spent lots of money on Main Street. And so it's not an issue about Main Street. And some people don't want to hear it, but I actually have citizens that I care to listen to, that they're frustrated when we go to their house and they're flooded because we're not maintaining the retention and retention ponds or our drainage or we have potholes. I know it's hard. This is felt by your heart because it's Main Street, but it's also felt by their heart. When I stand into a 17-year-old whose dad just passed away, she was made orphan, and her house is flooded. And you're going to tell me her opinion is more important, is not your, your opinion is more important than hers. I'm trying to represent all the citizens of our community. And it's not just about Main Street. Nobody's putting down Main Street. I'm not putting down Main Street. I used to have a business on Main Street. But what I'm saying is I would like to see that tax dollars used in areas that my citizens in my ward have said that is a concern to them. Madam Mayor? Yes, Ken. Lisa, are you finished? Okay. Just a couple things. Just, and maybe it's an argument over semantics. I don't know. I, I've heard this a lot. It's been, it was voted down. No, it was not voted down. Okay. The vote was three to two in favor of the contract. Unfortunately, that fourth vote was not uh, sitting at this table. Okay. So maybe that's just a minor detail, but it's a big detail in the fact that how you approach this is it was not voted down. Okay, it just did not have the support at that time. Now, to one point that Director Hunt made, even before I sat on this board, I sit here and I listen to all of the things that was said, and please do not get me started on that. I mean, that was out of line to begin with. I have never heard any bad thing said by any of these directors aimed at Main Street. In fact, I can sit here and tell you that every one of these, in either a conversation I have had with them or coming from this table directed at this audience, they were in support of Main Street. You may not think so, but if you go back and you review the meetings, I can pinpoint where each one of them gave their verbal support to what's going on, okay? Now, here's the problem that I have, and again, uh, Director Hunt alluded to this and so is everybody else. The veto. To me, there's still a big question about that. I'm not going to sit here and say it's legal or it's illegal. I do not know. I am not an attorney. All I can tell you is it's still an under question, and honestly, I feel like I need to reserve my right, uh, reserve my comments. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little upset because of the direction we're going. Reserve my comments until we have a clear understanding. Now, Director Hunt said two wrongs don't make a right, and that is correct. To me, the bigger issue right now is a second vote, because my understanding has always been that this contract is in effect, and I am so tired, and I'm sorry if I'm offending you, I am so tired of hearing we're defunding Main Street. That's never, ever, ever come in question, because the contract is in effect. It's in place. It's active, okay? Until that is settled one way or the other. I am looking at it as it's a done deal and it's moving forward, okay? My problem, and until I can get maybe some better clarification for my own well-being, is this second vote. Why are we voting on something a second time if it's active and in place? So, that being said, and I understand where a lot of this is coming from, but myself, I cannot support voting again on something that we should not be voting on. And I hope that makes sense. If not, please let me know and I'll try to explain myself. But it is upsetting to me as, as 
some of the others have said, Reed and, and Carol. I mean, we're here together. We want to work together. We want this to be mutually beneficial to everybody, not just Main Street, but everybody in town. And <coughs> it's tricky. And, and I, I'm really, like I said, the second vote to me is right now today is probably the bigger issue whether that's the right thing to do I, I and again if somebody can clarify for me and make me feel better about it please but to me we would be wrong in doing that as well uh, until especially and, and maybe until we know for sure about the contract whether what happened is legal or is not I'm not going to debate that uh, I, I just cannot support a second vote I guess is what I'm trying to say Madam Mayor yes David um, Mr. Patterson noted a moment ago the powers he has of uh, setting forth uh, expenditures and signing a contract. And I just go back and say, then why in the heck are we going through this if this amount of money was below the maximum he could spend? I don't understand any of this, why this came to us. We followed the board rules. Director Smiley, I don't know why you weren't here, but you weren't here. And for you to come back and say, I couldn't believe what happened, but there's some personal issues going back a long way. You're directing them at me, and you could not be more wrong. I'm not directing You are. No, I'm not. You are not you want me to tell in David. the right. David. You are not in the right to state <laughs> Director that Allen. I have personal issues with Main Street. Because that Point is, of order, David. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. If you will remember, you all have in your, in your directions that you will be respectful of each other and you will not make accusations. So please, go ahead and with your comments, but please remember that while you're doing so. I wish we had that comment at the December 20th meeting because it most certainly was violated. Anyway, I have felt exactly the same way that Director Wiles just said. I thought this was done. If it was illegal, it was illegal, but it was signed. And I have told people with Main Street, both parties signed it. I don't understand. I do not understand how another vote can come up. Because, folks, I'm elected to represent 18,000 people. I'm not representing 30 business owners downtown. You may be a resident, and I'll represent you as that. But I'm elected to represent 18,000 people, and this officious body is the top legislative body in the city and if this body does not follow the rule who will you want the rules bent for something personal down the road sorry it's not going to happen the police is not going to bend the rules for something so why in the world are the rules being bent this was a resolution that was passed they are passed every year and yes, I can assure you, time and time again, they are violated. But any comparison to my being out to get Main Street Salem Springs is 100% false. It has been spread all over Facebook. It's even been spread by our former communications director, Holland Hayden. Could not be further from the truth. I had issues with the lack of support of downtown trick-or-treat. And I don't care what you want to say, Mr. Jones, it was lacking. I even had board members of Main Street tell me, you're right. And I thought the message that was sent would wake somebody up and there would be more for the next holiday, but there was not. I really thought that it would get through and instead this turned into a circus. 
And it's unfortunate and it's sad that it has because it was unnecessary. Madam Mayor. Yes, Carol. Would you let me oh, finish? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were done. Go ahead. David, you have the floor. I'll just reiterate, if we're not going to follow the law, who will be following the law? Because time and again, this resolution that is passed every January, inadvertently or not, is violated. And we cannot simply say, well, we're going to bend it for extenuating circumstances. I thought it was done and put to bed and hey if everybody here in the room wants this to be revoted i don't know how you can guarantee you're definitely going to get what you want but if you want to roll the dice go ahead and bring it up again i will be the one to tell you in december 6th i said specifically if this wants to come back in 2023 as an as an edited changed contract that can be done that was the very first meeting this this got shut down i was surprised it got shut down and i was trying to say yes but it i thought later was told no but i thought there was a 60-day requirement before something can be changed and brought back but i was trying to reach out and give an option that would have actually been legal and wouldn't have been up in the air or having AML involvement or the Attorney General's office involvement or anything else. But here we are, and I can assure you the shenanigans of what have gone on publicly in the last 10 days is inexcusable. Now I'm done. Thank you, David. Carol? I'm not going to speak anymore. I think it's just going to create. Okay. Madam Mayor. Yes, read. May I call point of order? We're going in circles now. Yes, sir. I have a question, though, a legal question. You, you are good with us continuing this discussion if she has a legal question. <clears throat> if it's not rehashing what we've already done, then I'd be glad to hear it. I'm still entitled to represent my citizens, but Jay, so if we get an attorney... Uh, general's opinion, which I know it has to go through a legislator or Senate or somebody, which I think that's possible. <laughs> um, and it comes back against what this, what we're saying, say we vote for it. Say, I'm not going to say we're going to vote for it. I'm just saying, say we vote for it. And we vote that it's, the contract's legal. Um, if it comes back that the Attorney General says, no, that veto, do we go back to the beginning? Because I know it's a ten attorney general opinion, but it will hold up in court. Well, I, I'll, I'll just say, I mean, attorney general opinions sometimes are upheld by courts, sometimes they're not. Um, I would take an attorney general's opinion very seriously, but I would have to read the opinion and see what their reasoning and rationale is and determine at that point whether I agree with it or not. Um, but uh, regardless, uh, it would, ju again, just be an opinion. It's uh, not a um, official judicial ruling, so it would not carry any weight as to the legality of what has occurred. Okay. Madam uh, Mayor, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, um, I still have some clarification for Ken's comment. <clears throat> so the only way to put this to rest so are you wanting to just say don't vote and the, the contract stands or are you saying your question if the contract is legal? At this point, I mean, yes. I mean, the contract itself I'm sure is legal as far as what it states, the signature and all that. How we got there, maybe. I'm not 100% comfortable, but that's not what we're discussing tonight. My point is, in my mind, as of right now, yes, that contract is legal, binding, and in effect. So, why do we need to vote again? 
every you you may feel that's fine and and myself i don't i don't see to me that's a waste of time to me that's unnecessary to bring it back it's it, it's already done for whatever reason two members were absent it still went into effect with the veto i mean that i'm not trying to rehash all that i understand all that that's fine and i you know i've got my own opinions but that's not that's not the debate right now the debate i see is whether or not this should be brought back up for a vote i guess maybe if the, if there's a lack of clarity on my part is why do we bring it back to revote on something that's already been approved i have difficulty with that do we bring it back to possibly vote it down i have a difficulty with that because it's we had that opportunity and whether i agree or not i was not on the board at that time i watched what went on you know, I've got my opinions, I've got my thoughts. As I sit here today, and I'm with you, I am 100% to defend the, the laws, to abide by the laws, to support our citizens. To me right now, this is an in-force contract. If we're going to change that, I don't think, I guess the best way to put it is, I don't agree with the method we're using to do that, okay? Because it just seems like, and again, unless somebody can explain it to me where I feel 100% confident and comfortable, we're just saying we're going to bring this up for a vote on something that's already passed, and to me that defeats the purpose. Does that make sense? At least in my mind, that is... we're. We're kind of voting on a on a dead issue. I mean, it it's been voted, it's been approved, for whatever reason. I mean, how maybe Philip or or some of you others? Could, how many times in the past has something gone through and we decided we didn't really like it that we want to vote on it again? I mean, it, I'm sure that may have happened in other places and may have happened here. That's how I am seeing it now. Is and, and to me, it's, it's, it's more than just a house cleaning issue, if that makes sense. Does that make sense for you to understand? Am I, is it just as, the water just as muddy now as it was? No. Okay. And Madam Mayor, yes. that's what I, if, if there's any way of clearing the water before we all leave tonight, where, where does the contract stand right now? So, I've got my understanding of it. Director Wiles has his understanding of it, which matches my understanding. So my understanding is, at the last meeting, whenever the vote was taken to override the veto, the veto was not, did not receive enough votes to be overridden. Therefore, the contract became approved. It was signed and is in place. Is that correct, Jay? That is correct. Okay. So, as it stands, yes, it is, it is in place. Now, because there was a question to AML, AML's response to that was, if you want to do anything different than that, then you will need to make a motion to put it on the agenda, and at this point in time, it would be the next agenda, because we took a vote about tonight and that motion failed. So it would be at a motion to place it on the next agenda. That is totally up to you all as directors whether you want to go over that again, but as it stands right now, that contract is in place. So, Philip, you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, just to provide a little bit of clarity, uh, Director Allen, you asked about why this was even brought before the board. Um, I, beginning in 2020, I believe it was, prior to that, the board appropriated the money. Uh, it was within my spending authority. They appropriated money for a Main Street contract, a chamber contract, and a, um, uh, his, a history museum contract. 
and that those dollar amounts were under the city administrator's spending authority and and we would negotiate the contracts we renewed them we signed them we didn't bring it before the board beginning i believe in 2020 the board uh, wanted to approve the contracts asked to have those contracts brought before the board so we've been doing that ever since so just to provide that clarity of why it was brought before the board was at the request of the board previously so at this point in time after our discussion do I have a motion to place this item for discussion and vote on the next agenda meeting I do not therefore as it stands today this contract is approved and is in force comments are we done so moving forward we will move on to our consent agenda item C regular meeting minutes January 3rd 2023 yes at this point in time, before we get into the consent agenda, uh, could I ask the board if you all will approve for us to take a five minute break so that we can have a break? So oh. if, uh, if I could, I would ask for, Lisa, you would like to make that motion to recess? I'd like to make a motion. Okay, and do I have a second? Second. We have a motion, second, roll call. Hunt. Yes. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carol. Yes. Blair. Yes. Smiley. Yes. Wiles. Think about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> we are in recess. Uh, my watch says it's five, about a minute till eight. We'll recess until 8.05. Our community that people we care need about. to come back to order please if everyone will have their seat yes thank you I thank you everyone And thank you, board, for approving the recess. I think that it was much needed <laughs> by all of us, so thank you. So we will move on now uh, to our consent agenda. That cleared out the house, didn't it? Item C, regular meeting minutes, hmm. January 3rd, 2023. Item D, dedication of utility easements, 22,000 block of Davidson Road. E, grant application, Federal Aviation Administration, airport terminal, apron reconstruction for the airport at 900000 That is all of our consent agenda. Directors, is there anything that you would like to pull from this agenda? If there is not, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as, a, as presented? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Yes, before we take the, the vote, um, Director Smiley had to leave us. Um, she needed to go home because of a medical issue there with her husband, and she needed to be home to be there. So she will not be here for the remainder of our meeting. Thank you. Renee for reminding me. So, roll call. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carol. Yes. Blair. Yes. Wiles. Yes. Hunt. Yes. Is, pur is Purchase, Public Works Department, Solid Waste Division, 2023 Rear Load Trash Truck from the Arkansas Municipal Equipment for $205,360. And I will tell you, directors, this is a budgeted item. And Steve, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the board. Steve Gorzak, Public Works Director. The first item I have for you this evening is for your consideration is 
to approve <clears throat> a 2023 trash truck. Well, it's a 2023 rear load trash truck for the solid waste division. <clears throat> the division currently has four rear load trucks in their fleet. They range from a 2009, a 2015, 2018, and a 2020 model. The 2018 and 20 models are what we consider the primary trucks because they're the newer trucks and they're also the ones that run what we call the dumpster routes. The dumpster routes uh, are both industrial and commercial, or I'm sorry, commercial and residential. And collectively, they total 500 customers, just over 500 customers. So those trucks are busy. They're at least eight hours a day, five days a week. So the purpose of the, the new truck is to relieve the 2018 truck and put it into what we call the secondary trucks, which are the ones who, the trucks that, t that pick up um, bagged, tra or bagged yard waste and um, can serve as a primary truck if a primary truck goes in the shop or in the, and I'll, I'll bring it up anyway, the, the, uh, the ongoing saga we have with our recycle truck that's been broke down, um, we have a, a rear load truck serving as a recycle truck. And just to make sure everybody's aware that <coughs> when we use a, a rear load truck for recycle, that truck goes to Rogers to a company called Mark that's across from the airport, and uh, they sort the, the recycling there. So the recycling doesn't go to the landfill. But that's where one of the rear, uh, rear load trucks will come into play. Ultimately, the idea is to have a backup truck so that if any one of these trucks are in service, then, then uh, we can have one that is on standby. And that would be the idea behind this, is we, we get a new truck, we'll have five in the fleet. We can have potentially two that would be standby, but the nice part about that is we'll be able to have a truck that we can take in for just regular preventive maintenance to the shop, whether it's just oil changes and, and topping off fluids to if there's a truck that needs repair, which we've had a few of those lately, um, then, then the truck's out of service, but we do have, we still have four in the fleet. And as the mayor mentioned, this is a budgeted item. Um, <coughs> I do want to point out that um, the delivery time, the, the, um, the dealership is expecting to take delivery of a new truck in uh, the latter part of uh, spring or early summer. So it, it won't be as bad as in, uh, in other departments where they're waiting a year or better. And um, <coughs> this is a uh, purchase through Sourcewell. It's a, the de dealership has a contract with Sourcewell, which is a cooperative purchasing agency. And these, these people put these types of trucks out for bid so that we don't have to do that. And uh, so they, they provide us with a truck that, that match our specifications and also deal with the, the, the whole bidding process where the, the number that we end up getting is a, is a number that we would have gotten it had we put it out for bid anyway. And as a result, our, and we had $250,000 budgeted for this truck and, and we come in at just over 205000 So we did come in under budget. And with that, I... I would ask that you approve the rear load trash truck for the Sanit solid waste division from the Arkansas Municipal Equipment for the, the amount of $205,360 and staff stands available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Is there anyone in our audience that would like to address this purchase? If not, directors, questions or comments? Madam Mayor? Yes, David. Um, I had asked uh, Administrator Patterson to get this ordered as soon as possible. Um, I thought this um, had gone on for far too long. It, it became an embarrassment for our citizens who pay for and expect their trash to be picked up regularly that we were dealing with um, an issue of maintenance for just nonstop. Uh, for months and months and I think this should have been purchased six months ago and I'm just glad it's getting done um, that I think will um, hopefully cross fingers fix the problems of of what we've experienced with that department 
Thank you. Thank you, David. Anyone else? Madam Mayor? Yes. When I know things are on back order and on and on, when do you expect it to be here? Uh, late spring or early summer. Okay, that's good. Anyone else? If not, do I have a motion to approve the purchase from for the Public Works Department for the rear load trash truck, $205,360? I'll move. Second. Second. Either me or Reed. Both of I think we said okay. at the same time. Okay, I do. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Roll call. Carol. Yes. Blair. Yes. Wild. Yes. Arndt. Yes. Ristler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Motion is approved. Next item is the purchase, Public Works Department Sanitation Division for a 2024 Mack day cab truck from Bruckner's Truck and Equipment, $155,428. <coughs> this is also a budget item. Steve? Thank you again, Madam Mayor and Board. Steve Gorzak, Public Works Director. This one is uh, similar to the rear load trucks with the exception that this is our landfill trucks. And it's called a day cab, which you talk about a tractor trailer. This is the tractor part of the tractor trailer rig. Um, we have currently have two landfill trucks in service and uh, when we first did this the intent was that we would have one truck that we'd run to the landfill and back and then the second one would be a backup and we could rotate them out um, and that was 2016 ish anyhow we're at a point now where we're running both trucks so uh, we don't have a backup so this would serve as our backup well actually this would serve as one of our landfill trucks and we would take one of the others and put it as a backup truck the 2016 model is the one that would go into the backup um, but again it would be so that we have the ability to run two trucks to the landfill and we would have a backup if we need it and that way we can rotate these trucks out again for preventive maintenance and any service that is needed without jeopardizing uh, backing up on trash and our trailers getting full so with that, I would, again, well, again, uh, $180,000 was budgeted. This time it was through a, another cooperative purchasing agency known as G HGAC, which is Houston Galveston Area Council. Uh, it, it works the same as Sourcewell does, but it's just a different purchasing cooperative. And by that, by using these folks, we were able to get, again, um, a new truck at a decent price. The um, However, the delivery, because it's a semi truck and, and they're kind of, they seem to be in demand this year, uh, we, will, we will get this truck in either the third or the fourth quarter based on the, the dealership's estimate. So we will see it this year, but it won't be toward, until toward the end of the year. So I would ask that you approve the a 2024 Mac day cab truck through Bruckner's Truck and Equipment for the, in the amount of 155000 Four hundred twenty-eight dollars, and staff stands available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this purchase for the Public Works Department? If there is not, directors, comments or questions. Madam Mayor. Yes, Lisa. I'm glad to see that we're getting equipment for the sanitation department because it's really needed. Um, this is part of the budget and everything. What? Where are we at on a um, recycle truck? Is we're, we're getting all this equipment. Do we know where we're at <coughs> on recycling? Well, that's actually a good question, and I, I have an answer. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we had money budgeted in 2022 to purchase a recycle truck, and I had mentioned that the manufacturer could build beds all day long but didn't have a chassis to put it on. Um, now, between the uh, solid waste superintendent and Kevin and myself, we're, uh, we've I've been talking to one uh, dealership and Kevin's been talking to another and both have recycle trucks. So what we're doing is something that hasn't been done in years and that is the ability for dealerships to compete against each other. So we're working on trying to find uh, a recycle truck that we can get at a price that, that was close to what we budgeted and, and if necessary, you know, if, if we are able to do so, then uh, we would come back to the board and, and 
and potentially ask for a budget amendment to be able to buy a recycle truck and get caught up on our, our five years capital improvement plan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see that we're getting this because we do get complaints from the citizens. Oh, yeah. Madam Mayor. Yes. Just, I thank wanted you. to say thank you. Um, and thank you for doing the bids to get the best possible deal. Oh, That's you're great. Welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, do I have a motion to approve the purchase for the Public Works Department for the Mac Day Cab truck for one fifty five four hundred and twenty eight? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you, Steve. Roll call. Blair. Yes. Wiles. Yes. Hunt. Yes. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carroll. Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you, Steve. Next, we'll move on to our ordinances. Ordinance 23-01, first reading, amending ordinance 20-01, annexation correction. Ben? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Let me get the presentation up. Yep, there. There we are. Uh, my name is Ben Rhodes, Senior Planner. Uh, so before you is um, a staff request to amend Ordinance 20-01, which was recently discovered to have an error in its legal description. Uh, the uh, 2020 ordinance annexed in the property that's to south of Tractor Supply at the 3000 block of Highway 412. This is the same property that was recently rezoned as C2. Uh, the request for your consideration is to correct the legal description so that the area you see highlighted in the red on the map uh, is excluded from the 2020 annexation. Uh, this land was already in the city limits at the time of the annexation, but was also owned by the applicant, so it was inadvertently uh, included in the annexation legal description. Uh, this map just illustrates the um, 0 0.9 acre parcel that will be removed from the description. As you can see uh, from the map on the left, which originates from the original annexation, it was never intended to be included uh, with that annexation. And then here you just see the overall property with, uh, circling the area that's going to be removed um, with the uh, correction is, uh, is approved. And staff is recommending approval and we're available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address Ordinance 23-01? If there is not, directors, any comments or questions on this matter? Madam Mayor. Yes, David. Um, I, I kind of consider this kind of stuff, Ben, to be housekeeping or whatever. Mm -hmm. And if we could do all three readings, be great. It's just we tend not to do that. Uh, maybe we can do the second and third at the next meeting and get it done. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Anyone else? And Director Allen, thank you for that. That it was something that I was going to ask the okay. board yeah. if they would consider doing all three readings tonight. This is a legal document that will have to be filed because of the legal description being corrected. Um, this parcel was already in the city limits, so that is already on record in the real estate records. So this is not going to keep us from still having that land. It's just doing, going to correct what we filed for the second annexation. So I always hate to do three readings in case there is someone that could be affected by it. I don't mind doing one and then the, and two and three. Okay. But if there's no chance that somebody next to this land is going to come back and it, 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 it my ben, understanding is I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Ben. Ben, it is just a housekeeping thing, right? Strictly housekeeping. No one's going to be affected by this. Yeah. Well, then I, I don't see a problem doing all three readings. So when you make a motion, yes. then David, to yes, do I all. Will. Okay. That so we place Ordinance 2301 on its first, second, and third reading, suspending the rules and reading title on. Thank, Thank you. you. We Madam have Mayor. A second by Rissler. Oh. I'm sorry, Mindy, did you have a question? <laughs> According to the rules that we have talked about, it does say the following guidelines for reading ordinances are recommended unless there's clearly no opposition or concern, it should be read and open for public discussion during at least two. Now, I'm, I'm okay with, with overriding that, and that may be something that we need to think about in changing our policies and procedures. Um, so 
I just don't want this to be brought up again a, as an issue if, if, if we see this. Certainly. I understand that comment. So, Madam Mayor, Madam yes. Mayor I, I am fully aware of, of how that applies, and that's why I question Ben to make sure there's not any question that this is just a matter of on the books. It's not a matter of taking someone's land or someone's going to come back and claim if this is a housekeeping issue and it's minor, uh, we have done this before. In fact, we did it recently for some land uh, um, that was not a bookkeeping issue. So um, our, our board rules say exactly what you're saying unless it's just obvious there's no opposition. And I think your reasoning is perfectly legitimate for placing it on the second and third. I just wanted to make sure we all understood what was happening, yes, including myself. <laughs> and Ben, if, if I remember correctly, you did say that this property is owned by the same person, all of that whole piece. Correct. So oh, okay. All the one owner for the whole thing. The they just had two, one part that was out of city, one part that was in, and the part the description for the entire owned property was came in in 2020, and that's why the mistake happened. So, right, yeah. perfect. Thank you. So, if I believe that's clarification for why we're asking for the three readings. It is something already owned by this perfect. person. There's Thank not you. anyone else. Okay. So that being the case, we have a motion and a second. Roll Madam call. Mayor. Yes. Can you speak again? The motion. Yes, sir is to place ordinance 23-01 on its first, second, and third reading, suspending the rules, reading title only. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Wiles. Yes. Hunt. Yes. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carroll. Yes. Blair. Yes. Motion is approved. Ordinance 2301 is passed on its first, second, and third reading. Do I? Oh, I'm sorry, Philip, your turn. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Ordinance number 23-01, an ordinance amending ordinance 20-01 with respect to accepting the annexation of certain territory to the city of Salem Springs, Arkansas. Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we adopt ordinance 23-01. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and second to adopt 23-01. Roll call. Hunt. Yes. Rissler? Yes. Allen? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Blair? Yes. Wiles? Yes. Ordinance 23-01 is adopted. Thank you, board. Next is Ordinance 23-02, first reading, vacation of drainage easement, 500 block of Highway 412 West, Hammer Williams Company. And Ben? Yes, uh, thank you again, Madam Mayor and members of the board. Yes, there we go. Uh, so for your next ordinance for your consideration, uh, you're looking at a proposal to close an unneeded uh, drainage easement at the location of the proposed Jiffy Trip uh, number two at the southwest corner of uh, South Elm Street and Highway 412 West, as you can see on the map there. Uh, so here you see the proposed easement uh, to be closed uh, in orange, which I've already circled there, so, you, so it kind of sticks out on the map. Um, I would like to point out that a new drainage easement was recently dedicated to the city and as shown um, here uh, along the edge of the property. So city engineering has reviewed this and they have confirmed that the new easement is sufficient to handle the storm water as it's channeled around the new Jiffy Trip gas station, uh, which is currently under construction. Uh, this is mainly considered also a housekeeping uh, matter just to remove the old easement. Um, that's on file. Uh, here we see the uh, map of the property um, roughly showing the location where that easement is to be closed. Uh, staff is recommending approval uh, with no needed conditions and we stand ready for any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address Ordinance 23-02? Yes, sir. Please come to the mic. Give us your name, address, and you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Don Rose from Enid, Oklahoma. Um, I represent Jiffy Trip that we have under construction right now. 
and I had wanted to request that we could do all the hearings tonight on this. This is solely within our property, and we have already made the drainage change. So that was really my request, was just if we could do it all tonight also. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? If not, directors, comments or questions? I just had a question, yes. Ben. Does Hammer Williams own the entire Franklin Electric property? That's my understanding, yes. Anyone else? Madam Mayor, I, yes. I think I understood Mr. Rose saying use the same precedent that was just set with putting on the first, second, and third reading. So I am okay with that if everybody else is okay with that, and I will make a motion to that. Well, I'll just make a motion to that effect, then you can tell me if there's a second and a Okay. And approval for that. So your motion is I'm to place ordinance 23-02 on its first, second, and third reading, suspending the rules and reading title only. Yes. Ask a question. Yes, you may ask a question. There's not a second. Ben, is there any legal ramifications for us doing all three readings? Um, it just would be done uh, sooner than, than otherwise. I, so I don't know. If, uh, I, it's the same practice because it's just owned by the same people? Is that what I was I didn't understand. It's this is all owned by one individual. The the lot on which the new JV trip is being constructed right now. So, so the same thing that we just voted on, except it was housekeeping. This is not housekeeping. That's the difference. I mean it, that that it's it's a matter where I don't ma I would imagine there'd be a lot of public comment if that's what you're asking. Um, the the housekeeping matter was more correcting something in the record that was a mistake. This is just closing an unneeded easement. So there's a possibility for public comment. It potentially, there could be a public comment. Yes, I I don't know of any at this point in time that anyone's spoken to us about it. So, and I understand your request because I happen to travel from Enid here, but I, <laughs> since there is potential for the community to come in and make a comment, I suggest that we do the second and third. So oh, if that being the case, but the motion has been made, but I do not have a second. Do I have a second? If I do not, the motion dies for lack of a second. So I would ask then, do I have a motion to place ordinance 23-02 on its first reading, suspending the rules and reading title only? So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Roll call. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carroll. Yes. Blair. Yes. Lyles? Yes. Hunt? Yes. Motion is approved. Philip? Ordinance number 23-02, an ordinance vacating and abandoning a drainage utility easement right-of-way within lot two of the Solemn, Solemn Warehouse Edition. Thank you. Next is resolutions. Resolution 05-23, appointing settlement representative in the Lockhart litigation matter. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this resolution? Madam Mayor, would you like yes. Jay to explain it first? Yes, sir. That would probably be a good idea. Thank you. I'm just trying to cut you out of this altogether. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> um, yeah, we brought this up uh, last time. Um, we had just, uh, just before the meeting, we received a uh, notice that this had been scheduled for a settlement conference. Um, this is a case that is pending in uh, federal court in the Western District of Arkansas. Uh, it's a gentleman that was stopped by the uh, uh, police department over three years ago. Um, he was uh, issued uh, citations. Um, he uh, contends that the uh, arrest and the citations were um, issued improperly, that he was uh, falsely arrested and charged, and uh, has alleged various violations of his civil rights. Um, the uh, city has denied any wrongdoing. Uh, the city has declined to make any uh, offer of settlement in this case, and that remains the, uh, our recommendation. Uh, however, we are required to um, attend, and uh, rather than have the uh, full board, or at least a uh, quorum of the board, attend the, uh, the hearing, um, we do have approval from the judge that uh, a settlement representative can appear 
on the board's behalf as long as the board grants them uh, full and final settlement authority. Uh, again, the recommendation is um, not to settle. Um, I have spoken with the uh, uh, AML attorneys, and they said, well, we, we don't believe the city did anything wrong, but if perhaps you know, they, would, they would accept some minimal uh, nominal uh, nuisance value damages along with um, no admission of wrongdoing by the city, perhaps we could settle on that basis. Um, so that's the recommendation as of now. Um, of course, you don't know. I mean, something could come out of the settlement hearing that's completely out of the blue that, that uh, no one's aware of um, at this point um, that could change the complexion of things. But as of right now, um, the uh, recommendation is for um, either no settlement um, or uh, perhaps to consider um, a nuisance value settlement. Um, as far as who would be appointed, uh, typically that would be the uh, mayor or city administrator, um, and that is up to the discretion of the, uh, um, of the board. Um, having spoken with both, I don't believe the uh, mayor, and I'm, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I don't believe that she's anxious to <laughs> attend and is fine with uh, the city administrator taking her place. So uh, that would be our recommendation. <clears throat> Thank you, Jay. Now, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address ordinance, or I'm sorry, resolution 0523? If there is not, directors, questions, comments from you? Madam Mayor, I make a yes. motion that we approve resolution 0523 appointing our city administrator, Philip Patterson. You can do that day, Philip, is that correct? The 19th? Yes, sir. And I recommend he be our designated representative. Thank you. Oh, and I might have taken a vacation day, well, but no, it's too late now. <laughs> That's why I asked. <laughs> and it's at 9 a.m. It's at 9 a.m., yes. And do I have a second to that motion? Madam Mayor? Yes. Ken. Sorry, just clarification. Yes, sir. You are going to refuse any settlement based on the recommendation, then correct? Um, Unless I, it's, well, I don't think my two do. cents worth, okay? Let me, let me say this first. Yeah. I would not accept any settlement, even if it was minimal. I would not accept anything that could even hint that we might be in the wrong so if I would be against that if that were the case so you might need to just explain a little bit more to me well we need to ha I I would as a representative if that's the board's pleasure I would want to have uh, a discussion with AML Jay's been in discussion with AML I have not if if there's an opportunity uh, if, a, if AML recommends settling for some minor dollars in lieu of going to court and having court cases and paying attorney's fees and doing all that, I think with as direct uh, as city attorney William said that, um, you know, without any admission of guilt, I think, you know, I, I'd want to hear AML's reasoning behind that. Um, if there is a proposal for a, you know, large settlement and AML says we've done nothing wrong, then I would agree that we're not likely to settle. But I, I would want to hear from the AML attorneys and, and base any decision based on what settlement is proposed by Mr. Lockhart and what the advice of the AML attorneys are before I would make any decision. Uh, I would take your comments under advisement, um, but I can't tell you how I'm, I can't tell you the decision that's going to be made today until we're in that courtroom and hear all the evidence that's put forth and, and hear the advice of the AML attorneys. Madam Mayor. Yes, David. Uh, I, I completely agree with Philip. There's no real way to, especially in a public meeting, guesstimate what you could or could not. And I have seen these type of cases before where the administrator actually, when there's a question of, is this too high or can we do this, we'll call the mayor, the mayor will informally poll the board will you accept this and that's how it's done but i don't know if that's possible or not but i do believe 
as long as, as you just said, there's no admission of guilt, then th then I, it, it, it's definitely worth considering because of as long as it's not overly high because of the cost of attorney fees. And, and I suspect in this particular case, based on um, some of the emails that I saw between AML and the federal judge that um, I'm not going to be given the time to make those calls. Oh, the, okay. the judge is very okay. clear that if, if the board is not going to show up, yeah. the representative better have full authority right. to settle. Okay. And, and it, other than that, then... I think it, you're... I, that's mm -hmm. why I say, for, yeah. you know, I so, think you're going to be able to... And I, I think we'll be as reasonable as possible. And, and um, you know, if... if I, I don't know what the number is. Taking I, into I account know, that you, so. if it goes, it's going to cost some money for court fees yes. and everything, yeah. so... Um, Madam Mayor. Yes, Betsy. <clears throat> I understand you don't know what's going to happen, etc. Um, I think I understand where Director Wiles is coming from. My concern, if there was a settlement, that it would then be open season in Salem Springs. Oh, I got money, you know, file a complaint against the police there. Just my concern is the precedent it will set. So if my advice would be, if at all, don't settle, but I understand. Madam Mayor. Yes. Can a board or director go with you? Um, I, I assume that you can. I, again, I think the judge is going to look at who's, who this resolution names as the representative, and he's going to put that person on the spot right then and there after, you know, discussing with the AML attorneys. I, I, that's just my opinion. So it's, are there any board of directors that would like to attend? I mean, I don't. I mean, I know that was a joke, but <laughs> <laughs> so. I think we all just ought to show up. No, I'm just kidding. That, that's the, I think he's that's one of the I'm happy to Relieve take us that of day that. off. Okay? That was kind of crickets there for a minute, now, Philip. And, and let the you know four of you as a quorum go. Now, the problem with that is then it becomes a meeting, and then we have to record it, and that's been the issue all along. The judge isn't recognizing that piece of it. But, um, you know, I... All I can tell you is that if you pass this resolution as motioned by Director Allen, um, I will do what I believe is in the best interest of the city, in the best interest based on the information that's provided from the AML attorneys and based on the information that's provided in the courtroom as to whatever settlement offers coming from the other side. That's, that's all I can do. Let me ask, I, it, are sorry. there, Jay, are there attorney fees already racked up on this? Do you know? As, as far as I know, um, our uh, attorney fees to this point are uh, $3,000 uh, fee to the uh, AML. Um, but if they have to prepare for right. trial, yeah. um, acquire expert witnesses, um, do things. I mean that that number you know could could rise, but um, I just there's no way to estimate stood. exactly how I, much. I just didn't know where we stood right now. So, okay. but, yeah, just a moment. Can I, I just want to ask one question? Uh, you keep talking about the AML attorneys and their advice. I'm assuming then that AML will have some of their attorneys there with you. Is that correct? Why well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have I have confirmed that yes, I have I have confirmed that uh, the uh, the AML attorney that has been uh, assigned to this case and has been the uh, primary uh, counsel will be in attendance. Thank you. I thought that was good information to know. Phillips even got the city clerk over here live. There you go. That's right, Lisa. I just want to say my stand is I want to protect the reputation of the Simon Springs Police Department uh, at all yeah. costs. Yeah. That's well, that, was the my, most important. that was my intent. I'm not saying don't say anything. I just want to make sure the yeah, and city I, and I is think as, in a good way. As light. Jay referenced, um, <clears throat> you know, in what little I've seen coming from a and AML, the Salem Springs Police Department did nothing wrong. Okay, and if there is a settlement, I would say it would be, you know, if it is a, a nominal fee. Um, a minor fee or, or minor dollar cost, minor dollar, I can't speak now, minor dollar cost, it will need to come with uh, no admission of, of any guilt, of any wrongdoing on, on the police department. Um, but I, you know, 
neither Jay and I can speak to what's going to transpire in that courtroom at 9 o'clock on the 19th. We'll just have to wait and see and go from there. I would like that to be a public admission of no guilt. I, we, we will take that under advisement too, yes. And so, yes. Because a lot of times I've seen cases go to court and they don't tell, oh, we won, we won. I, I participated in them. And they won very little, but they, they won the case and they didn't really win the case. Well, and it wouldn't be a win, it would just be a settlement, but I understand where you're coming from. It could. It so could I want a public win. if we can. We will, we will take that under advisement and discuss that with the AML attorneys. Just one more question. Jay, how long ago was this that this supposed occurrence happened? Um, it was approximately three years ago. Okay. Yeah. 2018? 19. Yeah, 2019. 19. So, okay. so almost four. So I do have a motion on the floor by Director Allen to uh, approve resolution 050-23 to uh, appoint Administrator Patterson as our representative. Do I have a second to that? I second. second. <laughs> I think we're all falling Take asleep many, right yeah. now. <laughs> Director Hunt with little, our second. A little suspense there. Yeah. Huh? We're going to have to die for lack of a second. Die for lack of a second. <laughs> a lot of confidence there. Huh? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it up next year. <laughs> Can we revisit this? I'd like this? to table this. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> Roll call before we get any further. Allen. Yes. Carol. Yes. Blair. Yes. Wiles. Yes. Hunt. Yes. Ressler. Yes. I think we're getting all a little punch drunk. <laughs> okay. So next on our agenda is resolution 02-23, procedures and organizational matters of the board of directors. Philip, would you like to brief us? Um, Madam. Madam Hare, <laughs> I did not get to take a recess when there was a recess before, and I need a recess. May I take a quick one? <laughs> so you may make a motion to do so? May Yes, I move to take a three-minute recess. That's all I need. <laughs> oh, no. Let's we'll say five. So you will say a five-minute five. recess. So do I have a second to that? Yes. Roll call. Carol. Yes. Blair. Yes. Wiles. I don't guess I can think about this one either. Hunt. No, you don't have time to think. Yes. Rissler. <laughs> yes. The prayer we are recessed for five minutes. Yes. <laughs>
We will call this Board of Directors meeting back to order and move on to Resolution 02-23, Procedures and Organizational Matters of the Board of Directors. Philip. Madam Mayor and Board. So at the last meeting, uh, there was a motion to, there was a motion made to um, approve uh, Resolution 02-23 as um, submitted uh, with the recommend with staff's recommended change then there was a motion by director Allen to amend that uh, and then there was a motion by director Blair I believe to amend director Allen's motion and then it kind of got a little convoluted and I suggested that you allow staff to go back and take all those amendments and make a redacted version which is what you have attached to my memo uh, the red text in the redacted version are Director Allen's proposed amendments. The blue text is Director Blair's proposed amendment. And then in addition to that, I received uh, over the course between the meetings uh, proposed amendments from Director Hunt and another proposed amendment from Director uh, Smiley, which you have copied uh, as an attachment to the, to the memo. And then... I wanted to uh, make two comments about the proposed amendments uh, in section A.6.C. Point point uh, if the board decides to have staff post the agenda seven days in advance, I would, I would ask that you give us at least one, but preferably two meetings to be able to make that adjustment because we have to make arrangements on schedules and adjust schedules to make that work. And then on the second point, in section B4 where it was talking about it requires a simple majority um, to suspend the rules and read by title only state statute is very clear it takes a, a two-thirds a super majority to suspend the rules and read by title only uh, and and so as director Allen pointed out if you if you ever have just a quorum and have four members and we are to read ordinances we wouldn't be able to read ordinances by title only we would have to read the whole ordinance, but that is state statute. You, you can't amend that with your, uh, with your rules and procedures. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, we were sort of trying to discuss how best to proceed with this, and I think Director Blair's motion is on the table uh, and needs to be dealt with at some point. I don't think another motion to amend the amendments can come in until Director Blair's motion is uh, addressed. And then I think other motions could then be on top of the original motion to amend and so forth. But I think that's the way it has to work. So Thank you. Is there, thank you, Philip. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to Resolution 02-23, Pro Procedures and Organizational Matters? If there is not, I will come back to the board for your discussion and your questions if I might, before we do that, as Philip has stated, we have those motions that are still on the floor from our last meeting. So because you all now have a redacted version in front of you and you have the other amendments, proposed amendments from the other two directors, one one thing that we can do, and this is totally up to you, but we can withdraw those motions that are on the floor, one, the two amendments and the one approval, and start from square one tonight with what you have in front of you to make motions to approve and amend. We'll take them one at a time and go through them. That is totally your call. The only reason I'm suggesting that is because I felt like it would keep it a little clearer for all of us if we don't have, as we said, an amendment that we have to deal with from last week. And then once that's done, if we have another amendment, we still have an amendment and an approval hanging out there that we have to deal with. Totally up to you, but I did check to see if we could do that, and yes, you can do that. But there again, what has to happen is the second for Blair's motion, the second would have to be withdrawn and then her motion withdrawn. The second then for, Al, doc, for Director Allen's motion would have to be rescinded and Director Allen withdraw his. 
Director Carroll would have to withdraw his second. That would leave Smiley's motion still on the floor. Jay, my question to you is at this point in time, since Director Smiley is not here, how would we address the withdrawal of her motion? And was, and remind me, was okay. Director Smiley's motion just to approve as submitted? That's correct. That was her motion to approve with the correct, with the adjustments or amendments presented by staff. Well, I, with her amendment. With, well, well, actually her motion was oh. to approve it as presented oh, with she staff. Oh, she was the first? She was the first, oh, okay. yes, sir. Okay. Yes. I, we went back to make sure that that was the order that everything fell in. So that was without Director Allen or Blair's. Second was, doc, was okay. Dr. Allen. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Allen. Oh, Dr. Allen. Clarification, I <laughs> think. Yes. Um, you would have to do director blair's first yes mine second because mine was yes. not a motion to approve it as amended with my amendment mine was an amendment after carol had made the motion that's correct so i that's think correct. you go in order and then if there's other amendments it could be made as a motion y yes that that's that is correct that we would in other words we would just reverse out what we did last meeting start from scratch if you will at this meeting no I'm, I'm not talking about reverse. you want to just leave them on I, the board as, or on the floor I think as they it's are easier just okay to, we said at the last meeting we're going to pick up right at where we're leaving off and when we tabled and i think that's the cleaner and easier way to do it um, that's fine. Uh, that that's that's certainly up to the directors. If that's what you all want to do, I, I you know I, it's your discretion. Madam Mayor, yes, I'd like to address each one individually. Okay, okay. So, Madam, do we I want to, Madam Mayor? Yes. Um, so I'm a little confused. Sure. Um, the motioning, like everybody's quick with a second, but then my understanding is there's got to be the first motion for there to be discussion how does but then other times it's like no you have discussion before the first motion how does this work and i don't want a second if i have to wait for somebody to withdraw it and we didn't get discussion does that make sense sure sure so normally we've we've had our discussions and questions have been asked and then I will ask if there is a motion. Okay. And so in this case, Director Smiley did make a motion to approve as presented with, with uh, amendments by staff. Right. And we had a second for that. Then doc or doctor, I'm sorry, David. That's going <laughs> to stick from <laughs> now on. <laughs> <laughs> Director Allen made a motion to amend what was presented right. okay and when he presented us with his list of amendments and there was there was a second right by director Rissler that we look at those and we did we discussed those and then you had another amendment right. that you wanted to make and so after that discussion you then ask for a motion to place another amendment right. and that was seconded so that's kind of where we are at this point in time and i understand that i guess my concern was like director smiley made the first motion and then director carroll hopped in with the second motion and director allen wanted discussion in between those two so i guess my fear is what if i want to discuss something when's the appropriate time we we ask we will ask if there is discussion on the motion okay so that way we keep them in order yep. as as you yep. as you will that's fine and that we're not and and if i'm correct philip if what you said is if we at this point in time we cannot have another amendment another motion to amend because we have an approval and we have two amendments to motion to amend. Is that correct? I, I, I think that is correct. I, I want to ad address Director Blair. I, I think yes. the way to do it is if a motion's made, there needs to be a second in order for the motion to have validity. And then usually there is discussion on the motion, right? 
so that if, if the motion's made and there's no second, then I'm not sure there's any validity to the motion and there wouldn't really be much reason to discuss. So, but uh, based on, and Jay may want to weigh in, but based on uh, the process of procedure of motions, there was a motion to approve, there was a motion to amend that motion and accept the, the two pages of amendments, I believe, and then there was a motion to amend the amendment with the provision of Director Blair. So that's the first, if, if all motions stand, that's the first motion that has to be addressed. And then there theoretically, I guess, could be a motion to amend the original amendment. Uh, but there can't be, I don't think there can be more than two. Does that make sense? Two. There, yeah, that's you right. can't continue to amend to amend to amend because then it gets crazy. Madam Mayor, that, that is, Philip is exactly right. A primary amendment and a secondary amendment are the maximum that are permitted to be on the floor at any given time. So okay. the secondary amendment would have to be resolved in some fashion before another amendment could be introduced. Okay. Madam Mayor? Yes, David. The other thing, I just want to reinforce that what we are making amendments to is the same 22, 2022 board rules that we had last year bringing forth this year, but making the amendments by the directors proposed. Um, I just don't want to say, well, there was something in this that we didn't see, and I only bring it up because there were still some of Director Rissler's, I mean, Director Hunt's amendments in black ink that Philip had inadvertently left in because he was going to first include them, but then he was in a hurry for AML. And so I found it and it got taken out. But I'm just saying we are basing the original on the 2022. That is correct. Which, if no amendments had been made, that would have been the same that's the way it's usually been that is correct sir you you were looking at in other words the resolution actually says a resolution providing for an organizational meeting of the board and adopting rules related to procedural and organizational matters and this is resolution number 0223 so it would be for the 2023 year moving forward and yes you are right they were taken from the what was adopted in 2022 madam mayor Yes. So, Mindy. Uh, Mr. Patterson, you feel comfortable that you got all of my comments out? You, you yes, with the help of Director Allen, I feel comfortable <laughs> that we. Well, okay. Because uh, it was not. Yeah, I it was I agree. Just the first that, that, one and the last one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I and I have not had a chance to look at what you sent today or whoever sent I, it. After the conversation you and I had this morning, I went back. Um, proposed amendment by proposed amendment by Director Hunt to make sure that they had not been inadvertently included. And you're right, the very first one and the very last one were the only two that had been in, uh, accidentally included. So I, I read through them as well and I didn't see mine in there again, but I just want to make sure that we were all on the same page with that. So that being the case, then actually what we're looking at right now is what was the motion and second by Director Blair and Director Wiles was for the amendments that Betsy, you had proposed. My understanding is that is in blue lettering in this resolution or in this rules and orders, okay? So if we leave that motion and amendment, then I say we, we have discussion on what is shown here and move forward then with these one at a time. That way we there's no confusion. So is, is that agreeable with everyone? Okay. So we are getting ready then to address the motion and second by Directors Blair and Wiles. That is going to be on page four under three, financial interest. In the highlighted area, I believe everyone has a copy of this. Is that correct? Okay. So then our discussion then will be on this 
language to be added as an amendment to this document. So do I have any comments, questions on this amendment? Do we have a second on that motion? Yes, okay. yes. It was, the motion was by Blair and the second was by Ken Wiles. Yes. Madam Mayor. Yes, Reed. I would just like to ask uh, Jay if, uh, if this lines up with, uh, with the state statute as well. Yes, that is affirmative. This is consistent with the state statute. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Madam Mayor. Yes, Lisa. This is exactly what a state statute says, is it not? Which state statute is that for clarification? Is I have it. Do you? Betsy has it. Go ahead. 21-8-304A. Correct. Anything further, Lisa? No? Okay. Anything else? Then I would ask if you have that motion and second? Yeah. Betsy's? Yes. From last time? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, if there is no other comments on this amendment, we are voting to approve the amendment as presented. Roll call. Blair. Yes. Wiles. Yes. Hunt. Yes. Bristler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carroll. Yes. Thank you. That motion is approved. We will now address the motion by Director Allen and the second by Director Rissler for the listed um, amendments by Director Allen. They are in red on the copies that you have, the redacted version. So we will look at these if, I'm assuming everyone has looked at these and has read them. So I will ask then if there are questions or comments on these proposed amendments. Madam Mayor. Yes, Ken. Just typo. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure our um, staff would catch this, but Philip, on 6C with 6 me. 6C? Mm -hmm. Yes. Last sentence, it says no, it's supposed to be no later than seven days prior to said meeting date. It just says no, uh, no late. So. Ours missing. Ours missing. I um, believe I took it, no offense, Director Allen, verbatim from what he sent, so I didn't <laughs> want to change anything. Me. I wasn't going to change a <laughs> single word. He has word. done well for a fifth grade education, <laughs> so let's give him credit. I, I, Director Allen, I did not say that. So. <laughs> um, but, um, yes, I'll, I'll make a note of that. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I think you had mentioned, and, and so did Director Carroll, that he would like to take the items one by one. So can, can we do that even in our questioning? Certainly you may. I think that might be easier and then vote on them okay. one by one. No, okay. you, so you, vote you can't do that. Thing. We have to vote as, as, as amended and his amendment is the whole thing, but we oh. can read through these. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, there, there's nothing says we can't read through them. Okay. okay. So if, if we want to do that, then we're going to look at this. And the first one, First Amendment, as I throw it in the floor. First Amendment is going to be under A6. And we are, re we are moving contracts and approvals under the regularly scheduled items. We are moving that above the ordinances and resolutions, so that is addressed first at our meetings. Okay. Next is going to be uh, under C, Agenda Additions, uh, where it has corrected staff or a board member can recommend a new item be added to the agenda if it requires immediate board of directors consideration and if the normal agenda setting process is not practical. Um, the Board of Directors may only place yes, such new items suggested by staff or a board member on the meeting's agenda by suspending the rules by two-thirds. We are changing that to all board meeting agendas and all packet information 
including but not limited to presentation material and staff report items will be posted for the board and public on the city website no later than seven days prior to said meeting date. Any board member or the mayor may add a new item to the agenda as long as it is within 48 hours in advance of the date the agenda is posted publicly. Upon request of two board members, a new item may be added to the agenda during a meeting if it requires immediate board of directors consideration. Minutes of the previous meetings of the Planning Commission, Parks Advisory Board, and any other board or commission which is appointed by the mayor or board of directors or city administrator will be provided in the board packet online. Minutes of the previous meetings of any board or group which receives city money from a contract for services will be provided in the board packet online. Okay, Madam Mayor, I do have questions about that. Okay. What is your Under question? 6C, the first paragraph, um, that with the uh, addendum would be, would start with all board meeting agendas and all packet information. Um, this section is about the presentation of agenda items, whereas section D1 is about setting the agenda. So it seems to me that that paragraph one should be moved to D1 as the last part of that paragraph. Um, and then I still feel like I still feel like five days is enough, but I think six days um, would be would be more doable. I think we're putting a burden on staff um, to do seven days, especially the city clerk. <laughs> the burden is especially on the city clerk. <laughs> so I, I would like to be able to, to move that or change that to six days and then I, I guess it doesn't matter that much where it is, but it seems to me that that particular sentence makes more sense under Section D1. Is it, are these all part of your amendments, Mindy? What you're talking about mm, right now? Uh, let's see. Um, n not the one, I, I forgot the A1C, or yeah, I forgot the suggestion to move. Um, in what I sent that was sent on to you all. Um, and I don't, yeah, I, and I did not uh, mention in my addendum, I, I was trying to focus my changes, my amendments on what we've been voting on, not on, on changing what you were changing. Does that make sense? Um, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna, I think that, I mean, I understand what you're saying I think that D1 is, if you look at it, it says procedures and parliamentary rules. I think that where it talks about the agenda, that is what it is addressing more than what is where it talks about agenda additions. I, I may be incorrect in that, Philip. Um, give me one second. But see that I, but I believe that um, Director Hunt, when you referred to D one, I believe you're you're not referring to uh, D one under number six under. No, I'm referring to D procedures and parliamentary rules under number one, the agenda that says the board of directors agenda order shall be coordinated by the mayor and city. So we're talking about coordinating the agenda. Um, we're talking about being able to rearrange it at the meeting, but all part of coordinating the agenda is also preparing the packet and getting it out to board members. As in my understanding of, of the agenda additions is what happens during a meeting. So the, the board of directors meetings and all of the, the subheadings underneath that are related to what happens at a meeting. The packet comes out before the meetings. It, it's, it, it's not a sword worth dying on <laughs> by any means. The um, six days though I would like to see as opposed to seven. Madam Mayor. Yes, David. I made the seven days on reasoning 
that we have had problems in the past and I'll remind the board members we're not here to serve staff staff is here to serve the public and the board is the represented representatives of the public um, I still believe seven days is fine and I don't have a problem putting it off till the second meeting in February that's completely fine Madam Mayor yes read um, in doing a little bit of research with this um, I'm trying to see if seven days would be something that is uh, viable for all of us <clears throat> I think it would do us well to to look and, and uh, understand that the city staff is there to uh, to work with us as board of directors but how can we uh, work together as a team uh, to make this happen to where uh, it can flow uh, more smoothly and uh, you know uh, in speaking with uh, uh, Philip concerning this uh, one of the questions I asked was will there be some things that may be pushed off to uh, uh, out one more meeting because they can't meet that seven days to be able to get it put in and I'm not looking to go to extremes and say it's going to happen always but uh, I think six days is something that uh, we're able to uh, we as a board can work with and uh, the city staff would be able to coordinate and get information to us to where uh, we may not have to push off uh, certain items on the agenda because there's just not time to put them in and I, I'd like to uh, I'd like to work with city staff and and not necessarily uh, tell them this is how it is there's no way around it I'd like to say what can we do as directors to work well with you but also get the information to us where we can make informed decisions uh, personally I from my research, I, I feel like six days would, would do that. And it would, cut off, it would accommodate not only the board of directors, not only the city, but also those that uh, may be looking to uh, pull permits or uh, get some things done through the city. Madam Mayor, I, I, I do fully understand our role. We work for the citizens. Um, I completely understand that but I concur with what Director Carroll is saying about, <laughs> and, and I feel myself working with the staff as well as we can is one of the best things we can do to work well for the citizens. It's working as a team together. If, if, if we can work well with the, the staff, then we can, everyone, us and the staff can work better for the citizens. Um, I, I feel like what I heard you say at the last, what I heard Director Allen say at the last meeting was that part of the problem was some of these holidays, these Monday holidays. And that's one day. So if we add one day to the amount of time, or the one day on the front end to get the board packets one day earlier, I, it, it seems to me that would take up for take care of that one day that we end up missing being able to ask questions because of holidays. So I would just ask the directors to respectfully consider that. Madam Mayor. Yes, David. This used to come out on Tuesday years ago and staff won't have a problem adjusting to this over time the reason i considered two days and i don't think anybody seems to gather this is that yes there are many monday holidays we just experienced one and yes there are many times that people take a vacation day including department heads on a friday they have a four-day weekend and getting it on wednesday gives us one day when that Thursday to ask questions except the board meeting day that's why I said I'm basing this on what I've experienced and I think it's not unreasonable simply because 
We are here to make decisions for the public. The public also has access to this information, transparency. So I don't understand. There used to be a consideration that if one board member wanted to table, if one board member wanted to do this, it was accepted. So if you want to make the motion to change it to six, go ahead, make a motion to amend my amendment, and we'll see if it goes up or down. Otherwise, we could be here all night. Well, is this the appropriate time to do that? Yes. Okay. Then I, I will move that we change that, um, that part of Director Allen's amendment to stay <coughs> no later than six days prior to said meeting date. Yeah, now, as far as do I do I need to add the location or is that a separate and and if the location of so what? the lo the location of that particular sentence, I was recommending moving it to section D one and it. Oh, my God. oh, no, that if if that's I gave my reason, I'll uh, I with I withdraw the comment. I will just move that um, we, that amend. we amend the amendment to say no later than six days prior to six said days meeting. prior to said meeting date. Do I have a second for that amendment? Second. We have a motion and a second to amend the agenda additions no later than six days prior to said meeting date. Roll call. Blair. No. Wiles. No. Hunt. Yes. Rissler. No. Allen. No. Carol. Yes. Motion to amend to six days fails. So we will continue on with the amendment as presented. Um, our next consideration is under old business and new business. Madam Mayor? Yes. May I Go. ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, Director Allen, on the third paragraph under that section related to the minutes of previous meetings of the Planning Commission, Parks Advisory Board, and other commissions. Uh, what section? Oh, the third. Third paragraph. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I just need clarification. Uh, assuming that passes, uh, are you wanting minutes that have been approved and voted on by those boards or do you want the draft? I think you want to get the most recent so we know, so even if it's not been approved, we know what just recently occurred. Okay, and, and what, the, it, assuming that passes, uh, they won't, the most recent ones won't all come together at the same time. So like the planning commission meets on the second Tuesday of the month, it would likely be that their draft minutes um, I don't know when staff drafts them out, but the earliest they would be would be on the first board meeting of the following month. The as long as we're not two or three months behind is what I okay. is what All I'm right. wanting. All right. I, I just don't that they won't, all three won't come together at the same time, and I I want to make sure you're comfortable with drafts because to get the the most current one they won't be approved. We we used to get them years ago, and it kept the board better apprised of of what was happening, and that's why. Rather than wait, and uh, you're okay with Just, drafts? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yes, Lisa. And the public can differ differentiate between the draft and visually and quickly. Uh, the drafts will Proved be. I'll that. have staff stamp the drafts as drafts. There won't be a signature at the end. Okay, but so something for the public because they'll they just say draft it. on them, and and then you know the the their own line at Planning Commission and Parks and Rec today. They're available online in their packets, just like your minutes are. But uh, if, if, I mean, if you want the finals, then it'll take a little longer because they don't approve them until the next meeting. So. So we agree that that draft will be in there. Okay. So then we are moving on to D. We are adding. We are making number two, the item number two, the Board of Directors is given the opportunity to discussion and questions to the staff and our applicant regarding the agenda item and moving public comments to number three. So I take that to mean that um, whenever I bring up, whenever I announce what our resolution or ordinance is, uh, it's presented by staff. Right now, I go to the public first, and then I come to the board. This will make us then reverse that, so we'll have comments from the board. 
and your discussion, and then we will go to the to the public for their comments and questions. Am I understanding that correctly, David? Okay. There was just one Scrivener's error, Madam Mayor, on okay. um, number two, between the word opportunity and discussion, it got changed to two, but the original word was four. Four. Given okay. the opportunity for discussion. You make that note in there, Philip? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Then the next. Madam um, Mayor. Yes. Concerning this, um, you know how it stands right now. We have our public comment, mm -hmm. and uh, we get to hear from the public, and then it comes to the board. Uh, the way I'm reading this, uh, we it come to the board first, correct, and then public would have their chance for comment, and then we go straight in for a motion and second. Um, I I don't I don't see the uh, the benefit of that because uh, if we have public comment and if comment is made um, we we don't have uh, any 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 time after that to speak to it uh, address it or not address it it just goes straight to uh, being voted on so I uh, I'm not sure uh, I would I would agree with that I feel like it needs to come to the board and the board should have the final being able to speak to it uh, and make our uh, motions and and whatnot. Because if, if we go to public comment and then we're ready for a motion in a second, I don't I don't see that happening. Madam Mayor. Yes, David. This worked this way for decades, and simply having public comment does not preempt the board from also having anything to say about if public asks questions. It is mainly because as soon as it got changed, public's in the audience and they have one thing, what's up on that title there? They don't know what is going to be discussed until the board of directors starts discussing it with staff and then the questions are asked by board. And I, I used to say, the people would ask, I'd say this is done this way for decades because the board of directors has the respect of getting first say time and again after mayor turner got elected and changed this there would be public comments that came up after the board of directors asked questions of staff not allowed disallowed public could not speak any further because the public comments were before the board of directors and it was very infuriating for a lot of people. It went on for years. That was shut down. There was no questions at all from the public after their time went away. As it is now, public comments may come up only after questions brought up by the board. Time and again, there would be questions that audience members would have based upon the board asking staff something, but of course, their time had already gone. So this worked just fine for decades and there's no reason it can't work again. Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor. Yes, Lisa. So after the public comments, um, can we not ask questions, can we not have discussion, I mean, or ask questions afterwards, or just shut down, or should we add a number two to be a number four also in case? It'll always come back to the board. That's I right. mean, because you all are going to have to make the motions and uh, address those things. So, I mean, it's always gonna come back to you. So if we want Madam to ask Mayor, questions or so this is a kind of an unspoken, it doesn't need to be in the rules, regulations, or? I would, d Jay, unless you say that that is, because I mean, you, we can't have an action unless the board well, makes that, a that's motion. That's my premise. Yeah. Uh, it, it's like we're, we're being cut off unless we want to add a number four that says. Like I just recommended. And, and that, I mean, we could certainly add that. Uh, Jay or Philip? Well, as, as I read the uh, proposal that's before us, uh, it does not prohibit the uh, directors from taking it up again after the public comment. I mean, so it in, it's, Madam Mayor. Yes. So then it's an implied then. No. Well, it, I mean, it, 
it, it doesn't say either way, and, and okay. that's an inherent right of the the board to okay. discuss an item that's before them. So okay. um, unless it, I, I, my opinion is that it would have to explicitly take that away. Number two does okay. not preempt the board from coming back to speak. It simply gives the board of directors the authority to speak and discuss things with staff before the public speaks. Okay. That's what I wanted that to clarify on. Thank you. So, so I, I was, that's what I was going to suggest is, is to be very clear with everybody that what Director, Al, what Director Allen is saying is that after the presentation by staff and the applicant, that the board is given the opportunity to discuss, ask questions of staff and or the applicant, then the public comment occurs, and then it comes back to the board, and that's the unspoken part, it comes back to the board for further discussion and ultimately a motion. Director Allen, is that your understanding? And the only reason this has come up is because the way it was changed in the past. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor, it, it seems like to me the, the important part is that, that we're able to ask questions of the staff before the public comments. That, that and, is correct. And, and, and then that our discussion, discussion and decision making will most likely be after we've asked all the questions of the staff and after we've heard from the public. Yeah, your motions are not going to come until after you all have discussed it right. and heard from staff. Public has an opportunity to make their comments and questions. It then comes back to you as a board for any comments, questions, and motions and vote. Is that? Yes. Okay. All right. So, Director Carroll, is that... Yes, I yes, just was okay. wanting clarification. I wanted to okay. make sure I fully understood. Thank you. Thank you. Then our next uh, change is under B, duties and privileges of directors at board meetings uh, concerning seating. Um, it will be changed to the board of directors shall occupy the respective seat in the boardroom in order of position numbers one through seven. Madam Mayor. Yes, David. I simply change this to what the state law has because as you can see the redacted line it simply said assigned by ward number mm -hmm. and there's three positions that are not a ward so i took that directly from state law thank you david is there any comments or questions on that particular change if not the next change will be under mayor and vice mayor that's uh section c one b under the mayor's veto power, uh, as it stands now, uh, the mayor has the power to veto any ordinance, resolution, or order other than personnel or part thereof adopted by the board of directors within five days, Sundays excluded of the board of directors vote. Before the next board of directors meeting, the mayor shall file in the city clerk's office a written statement of reasons for the veto. At the first board of directors meeting following the veto, the board of directors can override the veto by two thirds majority or five affirmative votes. Changing that to the mayor has the power to veto any ordinance, resolution or order other than personnel passed by a majority of the board of directors and or adopted by the board of directors within five days of the board of directors vote at which time the mayor shall file in the city clerk's office a written statement of reasons for the veto. The mayor's veto statement will be communicated to the board of directors by the city clerk immediately upon her receipt of the statement of veto. At the first board of directors meeting following the veto, the board may override the veto by a two-thirds majority or five affirmative votes. Madam Mayor. Yes, David. Can I ask that a Scrivener's error be put over the word her and just say their receipt? Sure. I, and I, I, I believe that is correct. It, didn't catch it should it, be, so. yes. Because and, and this is going to be moving forward. And yes, Jay. Excuse me, Madam Mayor. Yes. But uh, with all due respect, I, I do believe, at least looking at my copy, that um, there were a couple of items that were skipped over. Um, yes, sir. That would be in 4C. Sorry. The last paragraph. Um, having to do with um, with voting and then also um, uh, item number five that has to do with the quorum there was a uh, proposed amendment and I don't believe those were discussed we did we yes did sir that is correct we, we did went. briefly discuss the uh, voting um, on the suspending the rules and uh, 
as Philip pointed out, the uh, state law requires that we have a two-thirds majority vote to suspend the rules. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm not aware of any uh, uh, state law that would apply. Okay. So let's, let's go back and look at that. Does everyone know where we are now? We're under voting. This is going to be uh, in the, I guess it's going to be the second paragraph where now it says uh, a contract or approval requires four affirmative votes by directors to pass. An ordinance or resolution requires four affirmative votes by directors to pass. Suspending the rules and reading an ordinance by title only requires, and we have uh, changed the two-thirds majority or five affirmative votes to simple majority, four affirmative votes. And Jay, is that what you said? That, that change is, is the one that's not allowed by state law. Okay, so it does have to be the two-thirds majority. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I kind of thought no. we'd already taken that out. Okay. So, so do we need to make a motion to not to make a, that change? So I, I mean, make a motion that we don't change 4A and 5. Is that another one that was also that we discussed last time? Uh, the quorum, under the quorum. Jay, is that correct? You said that that would also... No. Quorum is fine. There's we're only else. talking, right now, we're only talking about the Four. vote. Under okay. the voting. Yes. Yeah. So let's, I make a motion that we not change 4A. Okay. Yes. Um, <coughs> just so I'm following. Jay, so I understood, and, and Director Rizzler said don't change 4A. At the very end where it says five affirmative votes, is that still valid or are we striking every correction or everything in red off of that paragraph? No, that, that, is, that is still valid. It, five five, you say five votes change, are required for an emergency clause. 4A, that wasn't or a that change. paragraph, but that will not be changed. Was that a change? Yes. No, that wasn't really changed. I added it, but it just was just a add change. It, I think yeah. it's... Addition. Can I, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. So if there's no change to this paragraph, it in, this, in the next to last paragraph, it says suspending the rules and reading by ordinance, reading an ordinance by title only requires two-thirds majority and then mm -hmm. in parens five affirmative votes. The second sentence says, the last sentence, an emergency clause requires two-thirds majority vote. I don't think you necessarily need to reiterate that it's five affirmative votes because you just said it. Because you just so said you it. Could Okay. The, I think so the, motion okay then is, the motion then is to make no amendments to this paragraph. Right. right. Okay, and everything would be so, yes. Yes. the same. Yes. Okay. So do I have a second to Director Ressler's motion? Second. So, <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Roll call. <laughs> Wiles. Yes. Hunt. Yes. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carol. Yes. Blair. Yes. Motion is approved, so there will be no change then to item four, voting. Next is the quorum where uh, a majority of the board of directors shall be necessary to constitute a quorum to do business. And I, we have, looks like we have drawn a line through that, uh, I'm assuming that was a proposed amendment by Director Allen, is that correct? A proposed deletion that, by Director Allen. That's what Allen. was deletion. already on there. Okay, yeah. And All it right. just was unnecessary to okay. do with the quorum. So we're just removing that so that it just, okay. All right. Is everyone clear on that and we're, we're good with that? Okay. Next, then, we will move to the mayor and vice mayor. Uh, item B, the mayor's veto power which I have already read what is already in uh, uh, this particular document. Um, what we are proposing the change to be, the mayor has the power to veto any ordinance, resolution, or order other than personnel passed by a majority of the board of directors and or adopted by the board of directors within five days of the board of directors vote, at which time the mayor shall file in the city clerk's office a written statement of reasons for the veto the mayor's veto statement will be communicated to the board of directors by the city clerk immediately upon her receipt of the statement of veto. At the first board of directors meeting following the veto, the board may override the veto by a two-thirds majority, five affirmative votes. Madam Mayor? Yes. 
the basic meat of this yes, sir. is no change from what we already have. Gotcha. So questions or comments on this particular item? We, Madam Mayor, we did talk about the Scrivener of her receipt. And yeah. Yes, and I believe that you've already made note of that. Is okay, that I would just change her to the clerk's receipt so okay. it's clear. Okay. Then what next is under procedures and parliamentary rules. Number one, agenda. Um, and looks like what we're proposing is that um, instead of it saying any item may be added to the agenda at the board of directors meeting only by a motion to suspend the rules, we are adding the language any board member or the mayor may add a new item to the agenda as long it is, as it is within 48 hours in advance of the date of the agenda is posted publicly upon the request of two board members, a new item may be added to the agenda during a meeting if it requires immediate board of directors consideration. Is there any comments or questions on that particular? Madam Mayor. Yes, read. Um, so if we're, if we're, if everything's approved tonight, we have seven days before that needs to have everything sent out. So these 48 hours, are they before? So basically like nine days before? Is that what I'm reading here? Or may I have clarification? That is that? correct. Okay. And um, I would like to have clarification on the, the last sentence. Um, I'm not sure the reasoning behind that and, where, and if someone could possibly give me an example. If there's a reason that something needs to be taken care of right away, don't, it only takes two board members to add it to the agenda. One has to request it and one other one has to say, I agree, I request it too. Madam Mayor. It, yes. Um, uh, I, can, I can see something like that, but I'd like to see it go to a vote as well. If, if one board member brings it up and basically gets a second I'd like to see that go to a vote, and if it does receive a majority, then uh, I think that would be a better procedure than just having having two. And I, I I'm not uh, Jay. I'll defer to you on this. If I'm not mistaken, that that is any time a motion is brought up, or in this case, uh, an item is wanting to be added, it would have to be in the form of a motion and a second to add that to the agenda. No, or it will just be. That that is how. It is set up currently. Okay. If this change were going into effect, that would no longer be the case. Okay. It would not have to be voted on, just a motion and a second. Motion and a second, no vote. Correct. Okay. All right. So everyone understands that. Okay. There are, there are some things, Madam Mayor, that are important to some board members, and if you require a majority vote just to get something on the agenda because as it is now just to get something added to the agenda you have to ask the administrator to put it on he's got to coordinate it with the mayor and only upon their approval can you get something on the agenda as it is now with what I have made an amendment it makes it easier for the board to ask something to be taken care of and if the board votes it down they vote it down but at least the power is back in the board's hands where it is supposed to be and, as the elected body. And if I understand this, you're, you're saying during a meeting, is that correct, David? So just like tonight, if we'd had an item that we wanted added, you could ask for that. Director Hunt could say, yes, I would also like to see that on there, and we would then have it added to the agenda and move forward with that. Right. So is that, everyone understands that? Yes. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to yes. uh, make a motion that yes, sir. going with this, but also have a uh, a roll call. Okay, so Madam Mayor, with a major oh. with a simple majority of four, three, or what have you. Okay. Well, the only way to do that is to make a motion to remove it, an amendment to the amendment, as we did with the six or seven days. So help help me no. understand what Director Carroll what was your what are you saying um as i see it, it read on that last sentence upon the request of two board members so basically a board member can 
make a, make a request for uh, something to be added to the agenda, and as long as basically it, it's seconded, um, then it would be added to the agenda. I would I would like to further state that we also take that to a roll call so that we have a, a simple majority before we, we add that to the agenda. Is there a reasoning, Reed, why you don't want to allow two board members to add something to the agenda? Yeah, I just think uh, as, a, as, a, as a matter of protocol and uh, just to me, it, it just seems uh, correct. And I don't plan to be on the right or the wrong. Uh, I just think as, as working together as a board, I think that would be the best, best solution. And that's why I added it is that we can work together as a board instead of being disallowed to add things to the agenda. It allows us to add things to the agenda. But if there's going to be a request to remove it or change it, it needs to be made in the form of a motion to amend. Madam Mayor, um, there is a, in that first sentence, um, it says as long as it is within 48 hours in advance of the date of the agenda. I don't think we need that second of, and we are making some corrections to Scribner's errors. Um, but this is also the same statement from um, Section A, Item 6C. Is, th does it need to be both places? This is regarding the agenda, this paragraph. Okay, which is, okay. So I guess it does need to be in both places. But if it's going to be in both places, then we, and D Director Carroll is making a motion that we revise it to include roll call, we would need to do that in both places. Yeah, you are correct. It, what has, in, in the, the, uh, in the, in the suggested amendment that we looked at earlier under additions, agenda additions, it does say any board member or the mayor may add a new item to the agenda as long as it is within 48 hours in advance of the date the agenda is posted publicly. Upon the request of two board members, a new item may be added to the agenda during a meeting. That is what it says, and that is also what it says here. So, I mean, yes, if you change this, then it is going to be in conflict to what we have already looked at. And, and so uh, I don't know what to do about it. I'm just <laughs> right. But, but yeah, you're actually, you're absolutely right. If, if they stay as, you know, if we change one, we would have to change the other because they will be in conflict of each other if we do not. Now that's totally up to you how you all do that. But if we change it in one, we need to consider changing it in both. Is that not correct? Philip? I, I believe that's correct. And um, I believe that what Director, I'm trying to study this, I believe that what Director Carroll is asking is to potentially not delete the sentence that is proposed for deletion except to change it to read an item may be added to the agenda at the Board of Directors meeting uh, by a majority vote of the Board of Directors. Is which that, is the way it already is. Well, it says a uh, meeting only by a motion to suspend the rules, which takes a two-thirds vote. Is that, Director Carroll, what you're ultimately you're looking to, to try to get to? I'm just looking at a matter of protocol and uh, allowing us as, as the seven to, to work together on that and have confirmation from, from us as the seven. So do you want to make a motion then to amend as Philip has stated? I mean, is he stating what, what you are trying to accomplish, the amendment that you want to make? Would you say that one more time for him, Philip? Um, hang on one second. I just left that page. So if, if I'm understanding, Director Carroll, your desire your your motion would change the proposed deletion in D1 and in whatever other section previously that includes this 
change the proposed deleted section to read an item may be added to the agenda at the board of directors meeting by a majority vote of the board and then that would then delete the last proposed the last sentence of director allen's proposed change upon the request of two board members a new item may be added to the agenda during a meeting if it requires immediate board of directors consideration it just flips that and changes mm -hmm. motion to suspend to a majority vote i like that <clears throat> I, I have no personal uh, agenda with this but um you know, if I, if I felt like something needed to be brought up, I'd want to make sure that I had confirmation, uh, at least on a majority setting from, from my colleagues, that it, it's worth, uh, worthy of being brought up um, during a meeting versus going through the process. Madam Mayor. Yes. I Lisa. get Director Carroll's um, idea on that, but sometimes it doesn't allow for discussion is what I feel is that when we we vote on it before we even know the discussion we're really not we're not getting to move something forward that may need to be moved forward okay i'm not speaking of the actual item but the the i uh, the motion to be even brought in let's say i had something to do with the parks it's not we're not we wouldn't vote on what I'm wanting to bring in, but we'd vote on if we want to bring it into this meeting or if we want to hold off to another. That's my, that's my premise. But as it is, like, I, I see it both ways, but sometimes I think it cuts off discussion because we're just voting on what we think somebody might mean when they make a motion to add an agenda item when we really don't know because we've never had discussion. I don't, I don't think you could get the topic even on the floor and and discuss it likely be discussing the motion right but you, but yeah. but if you cannot even have two board members request that a topic be put on for discussion then you're limiting the power of the board and the discussion of the people in the city which I don't think we're supposed to be doing. I think we're supposed to be more transparent and opening it up for discussion. So Madam Mayor? Yes. David, I'm, I'm sorry if I cut you off. I understand what David's saying. I understand what Rita's saying. But I'm just thinking, as of right now, there's only six of us. And if we did it the way you're suggesting, and I understand this is just to get it to a point of discussion. Yes. We're not voting on the item itself. But if in this case, say, I wanted to paint this room purple, and I was adamant about that, um, and Lisa and Betsy are with me because purple's their favorite color. Okay, but you're not, you're not, and she loves chartreuse. It goes nowhere because it can't be a, a, a four to three vote. So I'm not saying I disagree with that. I'm just thinking of the functionality more than anything. Okay. And so with if and you correct me if I'm wrong, please, David. If I want to paint it and she wants to paint it, that is enough to get it discussing. And then you all can say I'm crazy and... That's right. Vote it down. That's right. So that's where I see it going. And otherwise, I'm not totally not power, saying so I, I disagree with your, your thought, but I can see where it would hinder discussion in a case like this. Okay. And that's all, Madam I'm Mayor, that's all I'm saying. Well, first, I think if, if Director Wiles thinks that um, painting the boardroom purple is a matter of immediate consideration, we might have a problem. Well, that's probably true. But, <laughs> but aside from that, no. <laughs> I do think that immediate board of directors consideration is something that we really have to consider here. It's, it's, it's not going to be just anything. It's going to be something that needs to be discussed. But then we will 
either have the opportunity to turn it down if we don't agree with it or table, or table it yeah. or table it so that that's the way i'll look at it yes Reed. i will just act like i didn't say anything <laughs> oh. no we all agree with what i mean we all understand what you're saying so at this point in time then it is we have no amendments to this particular May, may I ask one additional question? Yes, Director sir, Allen. you may. Director Allen, in the first sentence of that proposed change to D1, any board member or the mayor may add a new item to the agenda. Would you uh, be willing to delete the word new? Because at that point, we're putting the agenda together. Yeah. The second sentence refers to new items on the agenda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Just thank you. the word new. Thank you. So everyone sees that and and we are fine with that in we are both places in that first sentence it says any board member or the mayor may add a new item to the agenda as long as it is within 48 hours in advance so on and so forth we are just removing where it says new item it will just be add a item to the agenda is that correct fellow what you're asking yes. and David that new is could be old yes and madam mayor printed so in that the word new and the second of is being deleted per director allen's proposal correct okay and actually yes. madam mayor actually it needs second to be item. an item not a item and you are right at an item <laughs> all right yeah that second uh, that second correct. of was supposed to be deleted too Philip. <laughs> yes sir and yep. so delete new change a to an got it all right two places so then we will move on to uh, still under D um, and in the paragraph under reconsideration uh, the second paragraph we are uh, removing where it says two-thirds majority affirmative vote for uh, suspending the rules and reading an ordinance by title only requires uh, four affirmative votes rather than the two-thirds and an emergency clause requires a two-thirds majority vote or five affirmative votes where are you at madam mayor i'm sorry i am under d procedures and parliamentary rules i do not see that we don't i don't have it either yeah that's what we just did isn't that's it? on c that's what we just went over new item okay that's d1 we have moved now on to page seven under internal boards committees commissions and appointments yes all right i'm with you all now so <laughs> <laughs> all right so we are adding a paragraph <clears throat> looks like which says the deadline date for acceptance of applicants of public individuals to be appointed to city commissions boards committees or any other appointments shall be communicated to the board of directors in a clear and separate email all applications for these positions shall be provided to the board of directors upon request and the applications for the final choices shall be emailed to the board of directors before the appointments are included in the board packet any questions or comments on this particular change there is not madam mayor yes Mindy um, I'm not sure exactly what what I'm asking or recommending that we change there um, let's see the deadline date for okay I recommend we change that to say the deadline date for acceptance of applications to city commissions, boards, committees, or other appointments shall be communicated to the board of directors by the city administrator once notification of deadline has been published, um, as opposed to in a clear and separate email. I mean, I guess in a clear and separate email. What is okay. the problem with the uh, way it's, it's done? Well, okay, let me keep going. Um, well, or, or it can just say in a clear and separate email. Uh, it's in my, and, and period, in my opinion, it's not necessary to include the comments about the applications being provided to board by request as that's pretty understood. I mean, we, we not understood. We have, we, not, we have not gotten all of these in the past. If we request them, we could. 
But yep. that's the point, Mindy, is that we shouldn't have to call or text or email. Phil but it say, says pro be provided to the board of directors upon request. That's what your words say. But well, we're dealing with two different sentences, right? Well, the, that's I, I'm recommending we don't even need that second sentence because if we were to request the uh, all that information, we, we could get it if we requested it. Oh, you're talking about, okay, I'm sorry, where you say board of directors upon request. Right. So that means whoever wants it would need to see all of the applicants. But the final ones would definitely be put into the board packet. If somebody wants to see all of them, all they have to do is is send an email request. and ask for them. So right, which then they would have all the applicants applications that they, why, why does it need to be in the packet as well I guess that's what I'm asking it doesn't it's only the ones that the administrator or the mayor chose for the position that would be put in the board packet go ahead Philip um, so director Allen the if, if in the second sentence if that first half is to be deleted because if a board member asks for copies they're going to get copies but that second sentence the second half of that second sentence reads the applications for the final choices choices shall be emailed to the board before the appointments are included in the board packet so before the board packet is published the final the the applications for the recommended applicants is to be emailed to the board before is that because that's not what I thought I heard you just say I don't quite oh. understand that second part. Let me read it again. Should be, uh, just throwing this out here, if, if I'm reading this right, you're, you're going to be receiving all of them. Upon request. Uh, upon request. And that, that happens today. If, right. if you request all the applications, you're going to you're okay. going to get them. So I think director, read the first sentence. Okay. Oh. I think Director Hunt's comment was that that first section, that first statement in the second sentence, is not necessary. Director Hunt, is that uh, it, but, right? Because, you, because we could do that now, and we would get them. And then what I heard Director Allen say is that the applications for the final choices will be included in the packet, but that's not. I don't believe that's what the Senate said. No, I, I, I was I was saying that as soon as you make your choices, that you should email the board to let us know. But if it's in the board packet, that's fine. So, I, if I may, what I hear Director Hunt saying is remove the first half of the second sentence, correct? Yes. Director Hunt? And Director Allen, what I hear you say is that the last half of that second sentence could read, the applications for the final choices, choices shall be included, uh, choices for, for appointment shall be included in the board packet. Are there any issues with, do the applications include phone numbers and addresses and personal information that? Phone numbers and addresses, yes. Is, is that information that we can provide to the public? It would likely, I think the applications are subject to FOIA. Okay. I'd have to double check, but if they are, if they aren't, then we would likely redact that information from the, from the board packet. Madam Mayor. Yes, Lisa. I guess I read this, um, in the first part, I don't care if it's there or not. I mean, yeah, we can ask for it. It doesn't hurt it being there. It doesn't hurt it being off. But the application for the final choice shall be emailed to the board of directors before the appointments. I think we had, it seems like we had an issue with somebody being appointed to a board and we wanted to, we didn't find out until it was released to the public and we had questions about that person that was um, appointed to the board and I can't even remember the details I think there's something came about which that's what I thought that was about is that not what it's about is um, so we could ask our questions about board members say that you didn't know this person had a felony <laughs> you know or just something that we could that, ask before it goes to the public I think that was the reasoning was that 
the board of, if the board of directors can have a say on who's chosen then what can we have a say on um you you have the final vote but you've already chosen the person you've already chosen the person and put it in the board packet so are you saying then that if the mayor and i were to meet and we were to pick three new planning commissioners let's say the planning commissioners are up for you know reappointment or whatever is there a problem to email the board and say this is who we pick can i finish sure but i'm just saying what's what's the question what's the i'm problem? getting to the question which is if if we do that and we say these are the three we're going to nominate is the are are, are you going to, as a board going to come back and say well we we don't we don't want you to nominate that person I, I, that's where I'm confused on how this works based on just what you just said because you you have the ultimate say so um, in in the final decision of uh, the the way the statute reads is the city administrator nominates the board and it's all subject to approval of the board we meet with the mayor to go through that and and have a, a another set of eyes on that but the board has the final say yeah, but we have the final say after it's already been chosen. There's not if the if it's one opening and one position, and and we get no say, and we do know something that there's a felony on this person or something that you have no clue. What what is the problem of allowing the the board to be notified? I, I have no problem with that at all, except if you tell me that you're not supportive of that person for some reason, a board member says that and it continues to go forward i mean let, let's let's i mean you know if there's a felony charge we're likely to find that out but i i guess my my question is going to be taking the felony off the table if if the mayor and i meet and we say these are the three that we rec are going to recommend and one of you some one of you determine that there's a reason that you don't think they ought to be recommended are you telling me to change that is that what it says here no but that's what that's what i hear you say so oh, okay. it sounds like to me the applications for the that maybe director allen correct me if i'm wrong here you want to know who what what who's going to be recommended for an appointment really before it's included in the board packet Right. Okay, so then it's the applications for the final choices shall be emailed to the board of directors b before the appointments are publicized. Is that because it would be publicized in the board packet? So if it were only included in the board packet. But that says the same thing before the appointments are included in the board packet. It's simply saying that the final choice application shall be emailed to the board of directors before it's put in the board packet i, I think and we if are you just have everything well in advance on your selection date it should be a problem i i was having a hard time understanding the, the reason what for that this meant first before. sentence the reason for this first sentence is that they had a problem getting applicants for the parks advisory board in august and september they only had two we didn't know that we could have recommended some people but they opened it up for a few more months and got several in the last week of December, the last week of the open, which was, I think, December 9th was the last day. But if, if it was to where we were aware, then it might have been helpful for us to encourage somebody or say, hey, shake the trees, let's let everybody know. So that, this is where this has come from. And, and either way is fine. I just I, I heard Director Allen say it differently when he spoke earlier. I just want to make sure it's where everybody's clear as to what's being expected. So if it's before the board packet is published, then it's before the board packet is published. Right. Right. So I, I would be uncomfortable. I think if there are concerns, they need to be expressed before it's it's published that's why yeah. he would be sending right. these emails to us before right okay it's in the board packet right so as soon as we get the email if there's a problem okay 
I'm sorry. I was just but reading that no, second sentence. Right? The second part know? of that sentence, I was just not not clear on, but I get it now. You let the mayor know, or you let the administrator know. Any other questions or discussion on that particular item? And yes, Philip, you have a question. The, is the first section, first statement in that second sentence being removed, Director Allen? Uh, no, I, I, I think it's fine the way it is. Okay. Anyone else? If not, then we have looked at all the proposed changes uh, under Director Allen's motion and Director Richler's second to amend. So if there is no other item to discuss in that particular motion for these amendments that we have just gone over, then we are ready for a vote. Roll call. Wiles. Yes. Hunt. Yes. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carol. Yes. Blair. Yes. Madam Mayor, may I ask yes. one other question? Director yes, Allen, um, you indicated earlier, and it, nobody said anything, but that uh, you would expect the change to the seven day to be effective the second meeting yeah. in February, correct? Yeah, we need to address that somehow I, I would ask if you um who made the motion oh carol made the original but, but your amendments your yeah. oh, they're your oh, amendments okay so. yes can i adjust you can add that amendment? to your amendment i adjust my amendment that these will and not go into effect until I, I, yes by all means please do and i would just <laughs> beg of you to give us to the first of march to go through it but i understand if if that's unacceptable so director allen your motion then would be to uh, approve let me see well, okay he he gave us two dates and i was just going to back sure. to the original to look what you uh the first one then so we're at the end of the january meeting right now um yeah the march 7th meeting that's fine i i don't have a problem with it so that would be included in your motion well so you the what what would happen if that's okay is in that a six seven it would just be beginning on Beginning the beginning the month of March or the first meeting date, all board meeting agendas, blah 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 blah. So we published seven days in advance. It's the way you have it written here in your memo, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, we we would just change it to the beginning on that. Only that. applying to the board uh, or to the packet being a. a, a yes. So a, that first meeting in March, uh, you said the seventh. I haven't looked to see what that yeah. date is, but yeah, that's fine. March seventh. So yeah. yes, thank you. As long as nobody else has a problem with it, that's fine. Is everyone good with that? yes i think that is so yes the board agrees that that is that is good philip thank you all right so that motion has been approved now um director hunt we have some items that you had uh, asked to be considered have we addressed those items um some and some i'm just saying it's not worth it um section a item one um it, this is just clarification in 2018 and 20 we held uh board meetings on election days um the resolutions say that we will wait a day but we haven't done that um so i don't know why that needs to be in the resolution when a holiday occurs on any such tuesday um let's see the regular meeting shall be held on the following day at the same hour unless otherwise provided by motion is originally that there was something about the election day well yeah. it says it in the current one it includes so, holidays or election days so correct when, what david or what director oh. allen is saying is that in a1 yeah it's second sentence when a holiday or general election occurs on any such tuesday right and i'm saying do we need to have the general election in there because that's not been our practice we've gone ahead and held the the meetings on election days so it, it's it's one of those things that it probably doesn't matter if it's there it's not necessarily needed in my opinion um section a5 um 
I'm just suggesting that we add as one of the ways to notify posting a link to the agenda on social media and that has been our our practice recently so we might want to add that um, and and then section D so, okay sorry, so let's D. deal with that okay let's, let's deal with that before we go on okay. so you're wanting to add under public notification okay what is it you want to add uh, and posting a link to the agenda on social media I think only that's been problem, very helpful. The only problem with that is that you're addressing posting the agenda and the entire packet documents on the city's website, spending, sending special notice to citizens to be considered making agenda copies available at the board of directors meeting and posting a link to what? Just the agenda or to the entire board packet? Well, it would be the entire board packet with the agenda being the first document but I think you ought to keep the only way you can find the board package is to go to the city's website okay. I guess if you it's have to do are that. you saying like it, it, it's just a link that would the, jump to the city website mm -hmm. it, it does yeah the the way we've been doing it is the the link goes to the agenda which is part of the packet basically are we if going you don't to think it's necessary, that? it's not. It's, huh? Are we going to require that, though? On, it's been done. It's been helpful. And I, I, I feel like that's been a, a good way of being transparent. It's a lot easier for people to just click through to click through using the post on the social media link as opposed to having to go to the website separately. So it's it's just an effort to to make it easier to be transparent, easier for people. <coughs> You're if saying like have the city post the link. They've been doing that on the Facebook page, the city Facebook page. Yeah, so, on, but the, it on would the, jump to the website. Yeah, on the okay. city Facebook page, there's pretty consistently been a notification about the next city meeting and a link to the agenda page, which is on the city website. So rather than having to actually leave that site and go into the city's website and pull up that agenda. Right. You want a link there that they just go straight to, and that's what okay. we've been already. We, okay. That's what we've already been doing, correct? Yeah. So is I'm, that, I'm not asking for anything different than what we've already been practicing. Okay. I'm just asking that maybe that be something we want to include there, if it's not necessary, because then it does make it a requirement. So, Philip, I would. Uh, <coughs> do you have any comments on that one way or the other? Uh, because you are. That's that's. I mean, that's what we've been doing. It's we're going to continue to do it, whether you add this or not. Uh, if you add this and we fail to do it, now we're, you know, out I'm, of in, compliance. <laughs> I'm out of compliance. Uh, but it's not a. I mean, we we will we will continue to do it if you don't add it because that's social. Everything's moving to social media. And I'm comfortable with your telling us that you're going to continue doing it. So you don't want to make that adjustment. You just want them to. Just make the statement well, th that they're going to continue to do. This will just be a reminder that it's a helpful practice. Okay. All right. We'll make Any, it. We'll we'll do that. Anything else? Section B, item one. Oh no, skip that. That's not. Okay. Section D, item two. Relates to section D, item four. So section D, item four. Um, And this is all related to the discussion that we've just recently had about reconsidering a motion. Unless it violates some state statute, um, I would say after the decision of any question, any member may request reconsideration of any action, not just a member of the prevailing side. And then I, section D item two states that um, let's see in the in the event a matter is not covered by the procedural rules for the Arkansas municipal officials the most recent edition of Roberts rules of order shall apply um, I believe Roberts rules of order does mention that only th those on the prevailing side can bring up an issue for reconsideration 
I think we can make our, I think we follow Robert's rules of order in some cases. We don't always follow Robert's rules of order, so we can make our own decision here. So I think what, to, to protect what I'm suggesting in item four, we would say, um, we would just add, um, unless otherwise here, uh, here, otherwise addressed herein to section D item two. So it would say, in the event a matter is not covered by the procedural rules for Arkansas municipal officials, the most recent edition of Robert's Rules of Order shall apply unless otherwise addressed herein. And the herein in regards to who can bring up reconsideration would be the any member, not just one of the prevailing side. Okay, I'm sorry, you are in B? D, D You're is in, a dog. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry, okay. Yep. Delta. Gotcha. Okay. Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, so, an issue I see with that is basically then if something fails or something fails and the people were for it, they can just ask it to be brought back and ask it to be brought back and ask it to be brought back. Does that make sense? You're talking about the very last one, item four? Yeah. Uh, that last sentence may address that. After a motion for reconsideration has been acted on, no other motion for reconsideration thereof shall be made without unanimous consent. Does Am I right that that addresses, or does it not? Because I, I, I understand your concern. I had the same concern. We don't want to just keep bringing things up over and over and over and over again, um, just because we didn't, it didn't go the way we wanted it to go. So I, I completely understand that, but I think there are times when it might be necessary or it might be helpful to be able to reconsider a decision. By doing that, you're going to have anyone have the ability to say, like that vote, and they could do it on every single thing we vote at every meeting. Say, well, I didn't like the way that went, so even though I was the only one that voted, I, I think it has to stay with the prevailing side because there's a reason that it was part of Robert's Rules of Order and we put it in our original Rules of Order and Procedure. Actually, I think you read something else about Robert's Rules of Order tonight, didn't you, related to this? Well, not with respect to reconsideration. I mean, okay. the only difference between what we have for reconsideration and what Robert's Rules has is that Robert's Rules says reconsideration applies to the same meeting that the uh, item was considered. Our rules say the same meeting or the, mo or the meeting thereafter can be brought back by someone that was on the prevailing side. Now, the other thing that um, was brought up is that under Robert's rules, that once that time has passed, a motion for renewal of the question can be made and that can be made by anyone, whether they were on the prevailing side or the opposite side, but only after the reconsideration period has passed. But what's the definition of renewal? And we do not address renewal in our board minutes. Um, we, we do not. And as stated here, where it's not addressed here or in the procedural rules for Arkansas municipal officials, Robert's rules apply. So that would be the default. But uh, a motion for uh, renewal is just to, to, to bring up a topic that uh, was previously considered. And the fact that it never was added before when it was part of Robert's Rules of Order, I believe, tells you that there must have been some reason that it was not added. A motion for renewal would put you right in the very, very same position of once that time period have passed on the reconsideration, anybody can bring up anything for reconsideration essentially but you're calling it renewal that's that's correct yes and i think if something let's say the board passed something two years ago and just now i'm wanting to say well i want to reconsider that under renewal it was passed by the board two years ago i wasn't on the board two years ago 
So it's like, if you want to actually change something from two years ago, you ought to go address it as a change to the ordinance through the normal procedure of motions. To simply say, well, I want to renew something, I want to do a renewal, you could be pulling anything from 10, 15 years ago and saying, let's renew that. It, the, the reconsideration is very strict on what you can do and the time frame. And that's why I say I think there's a reason that renewal was not put in because it's it's too broad and too unlimited to override previous decisions. Okay, Madam Mayor, I don't think there's really any reason for me to make a motion regarding my recommendations. You, you don't have a motion for that? I don't think there's really any reason to to make a motion. Okay. That brings us down to Director Smiley's proposed amendment, uh, which is to number one, to inspire transparency. Two or more members of the Board of Directors may not discuss city business outside of a meeting of the Board of Directors. And right now, that reads, members of the Board of Directors and the Mayor occupy positions of public trust all business transactions of such officials dealing in any matter with public funds, either directly or indirectly, must be subject to the scrutiny of public opinion, both as to the legality and to the propriety of such transactions. And she is making the suggestion that we amend to, in, to add to ensure transparency, two or more members of the Board of Directors may not discuss city business outside of a meeting of the Board of Directors. Madam Mayor? Yes, David. I, I explained to Philip you can't have a board member make a motion to make an amendment or anything through email. So this is invalid unless she's here to make it. And, and that would be my question is she is not here. And so I, I, think, you, I think you are probably right. And Philip? Is oh, I, I, I think that one's, that one's yeah, that, that one's not going to be considered by the board unless somebody wants to make that motion. Right. However, going back to Director Hunt's comments, I want to make sure that if you keep Director Hunt's first, if, if, you, if you keep, if you don't amend Director Hunt's first proposed amendment in Section A1 related to election, and if we're to follow this as closely as we can, then we're not meeting on election days. I agree. So I would. But no motion. No, no motion was made. Yeah, we can make a motion to amend to remove the hall, the general election. Is that correct? That's. I'm suggesting yes. you seriously consider that. Yes. Is that your motion? So would you then I will move that we do make the amendment to section A, item one. That removes or general election from that particular statement in sentence two so that it says when a holiday occurs on such tuesday the regular meeting shall be held on the following day at the same hour unless otherwise provided for by motion right. so second. we're going to strike or general election so strike occurs. or general election okay a second and we have a motion and a second to strike that language we have a motion and a second. Any other comments or questions about the motion or on that change? If not, roll call. Wiles. Yes. Hunt. Yes. Rissler. Yes. Allen. Yes. Carroll. Yes. Blair. Yes. Motion is approved. So we have now gone over all of the proposed changes and amendments. We are down to um, a motion to approve resolution 02-23 for procedures and organizational matters of the Board of Directors. Philip, you have briefed. We have discussed. Uh, the original motion was made by Director Smiley and seconded by Director Carroll to approve with the approved amendments. I think that still stands. Is that correct? So we are ready to vote on that does everyone understand what we're voting on now we are philip you have a question i can tell that you need to vote on director allen's motion to amend director carroll's motion we already did did is mm -hmm. that what you just voted on? i thought you just voted on the election no, we, we voted on that and then we did 
Director Hunt. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, we've now you got to vote. I think we've as covered amended. all that. Yes. As but, but what you'll say is voting on the original as amended. As amended, that is yes. correct. Yes. And Director Carroll, you had the second on that. So I did. Okay, and so you are in agreement with that? Yes. Second. Okay. So we are ready to vote. Roll call. Hunt. Yes. Bristler. Yes. Allen. Yes. <coughs> Carol. Yes. Blair. Yes. Wiles. Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you all very much for your input and comments and discussion. Um, I think we are ready for 2023. We are now down to staff reports, which is our administrator's report. Philip? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Expenditures $40,029.92 in the water treatment plant for two 350 horse vertical motors. These are the city's uh, intake <coughs> motors, the pumps that were struck by lightning on uh, January the 2nd. Uh, $32,422.26 in the water department for saddles and valves and swivels and fire hydrants for inventory and general line extensions. Per resolution 4322, 62,700 in the water department for um, 3,000 linear feet of eight inch pipe. I need to inform the board that uh, per uh, city code, there are provisions to allow for uh, under section 54-26 provisions to allow for minor variations in plans that have been approved by the board uh, that do not exceed 10% of any measurable standard. And on the Jiffy, Jiffy trip um, where the easement was vacated today, we uh, made a modification uh, subject uh, that was a modification to the approved plans to remove a trickle channel for some drainage and put in an underground pipe. The site plan was approved with a trickle channel and it couldn't work based on the design and we uh, extended and, and agreed to accept a slight change to include an underground pipe. Uh, so I need to inform you of that. December uh, sales tax receipts in the city were up uh, just over 10%. Year to date, we're up just over 9% for sales tax receipt from our portion for the county. We're up for the month 13, just over 13%, and year to date, 3.5%. Uh, um, last board meeting, I referenced that the Utility Commission were having their first meeting on, the, on January the 28th. It's actually January the 26th, a Thursday, rather than a Saturday, uh, at 5.30 p.m. here at City Hall. And then lastly, I would ask uh, if you have any thoughts, comments about the Northwest Arkansas Land Trust presentation, please. Uh, let me know during your direct reports if possible. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Philip. Um, I know the hour is late, and um, I, if you will just bear with me a few moments, I have a couple of things that I would like to say, and then we will move to our director's reports. Um, first is I want to offer condolences to the Anglin family, to Penny and Randy and the loss of their father. Um, Milford was a lifelong resident of this community and he and his wife Sue Anglin were great citizens. Sue served many years on this board. She was my mentor. She encouraged me. She helped me learn and grow as a servant of this city and she truly was that and Milford was right by her side and uh, he, he will be missed and I just want them to know um, we will be thinking about them and our prayers are with them. The other is <clears throat> I ask Chief Kreiner to be sure and stay and I, I know he would re much rather be home but I think it's important that we recognize him and congratulate him on being appointed by the governor to uh, the Arkansas Fire Protection Services Board for a two-year term. That speaks volumes of what respect this man has not only here in this city but across the state he is currently serving as the president of the northwest arkansas metropolitan fire chiefs association and he was named fire chief of the year for 2022 at the arkansas fire convention 
we are very, very, very fortunate to have this man working for the city of Salem Springs and its citizens. So Chief Kreiner, thank you. And we acknowledge what you do for our citizens, for your employees, and for this board. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you staying. But I wanted you to be here for us to acknowledge that. Um, and with that, I will move on to the directors. Uh, Mindy, we will start with you, and David, we will end with you. <laughs> wow, it's so late, I'm not sure if I can formulate any words. <laughs> uh, I want to just say thank you for those that um, were at the meeting tonight. Um, and for those who reached out about the uh, the Main Street contract, um, we had a, a couple that were concerned about it. We had a lot that that wanted to support it, um, and I I, I do hope that that um, I know that we all have the best interest of this city and the citizens in our mind, and I hope we can continue to find ways to work together to do the best that we can for our city and citizens. And then I'm going to pass it on to you because I don't think I can say much more. <laughs> Thank you, Mindy. <laughs> Ken, <laughs> loved you. Or, that makes sense anyway. <laughs> um, I just want to say that I was saddened when I read um, about the Anglin family loss, and so I want them to know that. Uh, Chief, good on you. That's great. Um, I was going to ask something about ordering breakfast, but I, I guess I won't. Uh, and I think that's all I've got. Thank you, Ken. Betsy? Yeah, I don't know that I have a lot. <laughs> the only thing I can think of that I've wanted to share and forgotten is, um, for those of you who don't know, so hopefully people are watching this, um, the city provides a service for people who are disabled or elderly. They'll take them to doctor's appointments, pick up prescriptions, on and on and on. I think it's like a dollar a trip or something. So it's just a, a service I learned about recently and so I figure there are a lot of other people out there who don't know about it that could benefit from it so hopefully somebody's watching if, if not tonight they will later so yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> Lisa okay. um, Philip is uh, for the land trust um, I'm all about preservation of lands um, we we're spreading out and taking our farmland instead of growing up we're growing out and that can be scary for our food supplies and other things so um i don't want to give you direction tonight i want to look at everything and i want to read on that and then i and then get back with you um, i do like the idea but i don't want to say yeah without looking into it and so um congratulations chief kreiner that's awesome um i can't see you over the podium but <laughs> um, congratulations <laughs> um and then I also send my condolences to the England family um, who has served this community many years. And I know her husband has participated in many events. So um, I'm, I also send my condolences. And I, ask, I also ask that we um, pray for Director Smiley. Um, anytime you have to deal with any illness with your family, I don't care if you have city business, I don't care if you have work business, it is hard. And so um, we need to lift her up in prayer. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate you reminding us that we do need to remember her. And uh, before I move on, I will ask the three of you um, your comments for the administrator on the land trust. Um, if, if you, you know, okay, if you want him to go ahead and, and get things together and bring more information back, I understand from Director Rissler she would like to look at what she's been given before she lets him know how to proceed. So if, if each of you would just give him a thought, if you agree with that or if you know you want. Okay, Madam Mayor, I do like the idea. Um, however, I would like to look more into it. And earlier in my head, there were some questions I had for you. So maybe I can just email them when and if they come back. So, but I would like to learn more about it before proceeding no, I would say the same thing and Mindy uh, yes I would agree um, and I oops sorry I uh, I do think it would be helpful when we're talking about the the terms to probably be a little broader in the beginning 
um, I, I don't have issue with really any of the things that they mentioned as possible terms. So just that would be my recommendation. Thank you. And now, Reed. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, concerning the uh, the land trust. Thank you, the land trust people. Um, I do see uh, in favor of that. Uh, I know the expenditure of the twenty-three thousand. Uh, we would possibly be spending even more um, if we don't do it. So I don't think the the financial part is is it, but. Uh, we just need as a, as a board to determine what is best for that property. So I, I, I'm in favor of learning more about it and see if we can get a conclusion. Uh, further, I wanted to speak concerning uh, the Arkansas Municipal League. We had our uh, winter meeting last week and uh, I was able to go in person and we had others that zoomed in and, and such, but uh, wow. Uh, it was really good meetings, and what I drew from there, people asked me, well, what was the best meeting? I said, well, the best one was out in what I call the bullpen, out there where you just meet other people from around the state. Uh, number one, uh, we are extremely blessed in the city of Salem Springs. Um, I met a, uh, a new mayor in one of our communities in in the state of Arkansas who is trying to put together her police force and fire department. And uh, she did have somebody on the, with the sewer, but didn't have somebody on the water or the uh, electricity. So when we wake up in the morning and that light turns on and the faucet works and the water gets hot, uh, we expect that. But even in the state of Arkansas, that, that's not a full expectation from everybody. So I feel like we have some work to do uh, within the state, but uh, I saw a unity there among uh, the different cities and communities, which uh, I wasn't surprised, but it was very welcome to to see how people were interacting and 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 working together. And I, you know, I, I didn't necessarily offer anything fantastic to this this young mayor who was trying to put all these things together, but I was able to give some exhortation to where. I think she had a, a little lighter step to where she felt like, okay, I, we can do this. Uh, it, was, it was tremendous to see. But I also saw that when they succeed, we succeed. And it, it's not just about Salem Springs or not even Northwest Arkansas. We, we, can, we can make it or break it uh, as a state. And uh, I'm ready to just stand alongside some of these communities and and help them where they need. And I may not have the expertise, but we can find somebody who does. So I, it, it's good meetings, uh, good uh, introductions to people uh, that I met. Uh, very glad for it. Uh, looking forward to uh, the next one. Uh, just and knowing that Salem Springs is continually blessed. And what we may consider hard stuff is just keeping it between the lines where some of these communities are really struggling. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful to be to be blessed, but I don't want to keep it to myself. I want to I want to give it out. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Reed. David. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I want to express my condolences to Penny D and and Randy Hanglin and the entire family for Milford's passing. I'd known him a long time. His wife Sue served on this board. I, I think longer than anyone else. Um, had before because I last I checked it was like 27 years that Sue England served and we ended up naming a street for her and Milford always um, was behind the city and big support of the city and it's a sad loss to lose him for all of the city um, I wanted to say you know I've seen an awful lot of negativity on Facebook about well now I'm vice mayor I've got all these board rules I'm changing I can assure you any board rules that I've brought forth are practical applications simply for transparency and informing the board and the public 
There's nothing beneficial financial I'm getting out of this or being vice mayor any more than any other. I don't have a super vote on these board rules because I'm vice mayor. It's just some of the stuff is just utterly ridiculous that's being said. Um, I thought it was really sad that some cowards have some fake accounts and they can attack a six-year-old girl uh, that received her, her bunny back because it was a crime that was committed. It was witnessed by 10 or 11 people at least at a restaurant and the police didn't give that little girl or her mother any more special treatment than they would any other citizen trying to solve a case. And as we heard earlier, our closure case, case closure rate is 98%. To attack this family, to state that there was any special treatment when our police were being taken away from wrecks or solving drug crimes or sex trafficking or anything, it's just sad and it's very sickening. And I'll just, cow it's cowardly. And it's sad that anyone would do that and get their jollies out of it. Now I'm gonna ask something that uh, Administrator Patterson told me to bring up. I asked that the widening of Villaview be addressed because it was not really being widened. It was a side path being added with curve and guttering that would have locked in the width of that narrow street at, at even adding a little bit, it would have been 20 feet, no more than 20 foot. Our code for building a city straight street for a developer, even a cul-de-sac is 26 foot. And I cannot imagine with the problems of Villa View already being what they are, that we would be locked in with curb and gutter and never in the future be able to widen that street. So the street department put in some culverts that they would have had to put in no matter what. And I asked Administrator Patterson to consider looking at what the cost and requirement would be to actually widen the street. Um, I believe the majority of any right of way could be gotten on the south side of the street because so many homes on that side are far off from the street. And I will, I'm sure I'm sure I'll be written up on Facebook that I'm doing all this to help myself. No, this was supposed to have been done 20 years ago when Mr. Latham was administrator and it never got done and there was not one tenth of the development out there 20 years ago. It needs it. We, did, we repaved the bottom half that was below the hill, but the majority of homes are from the top of the hill to dogwood, and this street needs more than just a side path. I'm glad we're doing a side path. I'm glad we're gonna have, because people have been walking in the streets and biking in the streets for years, and it's dangerous, especially when you have a street that is crumbling on both sides. It is not wide enough. I have my, I've had my mirrors hit so many times it's unreal because you get as far as you can get over and it's just not enough. So I did ask Mr. Patterson to go and investigate and to come back to the board and give us a report on, on what it would take to widen that street to a, a decent width. Um, and that's all I have. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Yes, just, well, may I, may I address it since it is in Ward 1? Just, just give a little history from my perspective. I, I'm not disagreeing with what Director Allen is, is saying. Um, the, my understanding, so, so I had people early, uh, within a year or so after I started my first term on the board, I had some residents, three to four residents on Villa View, um, talk about the terrible condition, especially down near um, the state line and they wanted that fixed but they also talked about the same thing that you've talked about that the road was just too narrow always has been too narrow um, and they wanted to know if there was any way it could be widened um, it was on the schedule to be fixed I think three or four years out from when we first started talking about it um, and we were able to get it the project moved up um, but then it got delayed again because of COVID. But my understanding, 
the biggest concern that was brought to me, other than the condition of the road down closer to state line, was the safety of the walkers and the cyclists, that the road was just too narrow for there to accommodate the walkers and the cyclists, of which they saw many, um, at least these that I talked to. And part of that is because the uh, cross-country teams from JBU and the high school use that road sometimes, and then there's the trailhead for a bike trail. And so bikers will go up and down. This is what I'm hearing from the people that have talked to me. So my understanding was that we wouldn't be able to do a widening of the road, but that we could do a side path. When I went back and talked to the people that had talked to me about, I don't know that a road widening is sufficient, but a side path is planned. They, obviously, everybody would like a widened road, but they were happy at least that we were going to get the walkers and the cyclists off. Now, I uh, Philip has talked to me about this a little bit too since it is in my ward so I think he does have a good solution I just wanted everybody to know sort of what the the backstory was the whole reason why the side path was being considered was because it was my understanding or I was told that there wasn't really I don't know if it was the budget or there just there, there wasn't going to be a way to widen the road enough that it could accommodate everybody but I think there may be a good solution now so well, and you, it, uh, it, it came down to after you realized it was going to be curve and gutter, there would never be any chance to widen it because you'd be locked in. Yeah. I, and I think I, it was different I, understandings of I what was happening. I believe that I'm the only person associated with the city who actually lives on Bellevue. And as many times as I drive it, and I've lived there 30 years, I think I have some experience with it. And the walkers and bikers are a smidgen fraction i still am all excited because yes the bikers don't want to drive on the sidewalk the professional biker but we need it for kids and um you know parents that have their kids don't need to be in the street and there are a lot more people walking um i don't know if the cross country will use the side path or not because it's kind of like the bikers they don't want to they want to be on the pavement uh, but they might. They, they might. I actually see them I, I on my sidewalk do. in front of my house all the but, time. Um, I just didn't want us to be locked in and never in the future be able to do anything to even add two feet. Um, and it's desperately needed. So um, I just said, let's reconsider this. So may I? Yeah, yeah. So I asked staff to look into it. So for everybody's knowledge, the existing condition is about 18 feet of pavement. So edge of asphalt to edge of asphalt is about 18 feet. Uh, what the plan was, was to uh, build an eight foot side path, a walk bike path uh, with curb and gutter along the south side um, and to extend from the edge of asphalt on the north side to the back of curb on the south side, that would end up being a, a 20 to 21 feet. So it gets a little wider, but the majority of that is curb, right? Gives you a little bit of width, but it's not really asphalt extension. Minor, minor foot maybe of asphalt. Um, what I asked staff to look at was five foot sidewalks are typically the minimum width, uh, but to reduce the eight foot down to six feet. And we could do that, and then that edge of asphalt to back of curb gains two feet. So instead of 20 to 21 feet, we could get 23 to 24 feet, still have a six foot sidewalk that uh, in some cases could be larger than that because there was some small areas of green space uh, between the back of curb and the sidewalk. And I would just concrete the whole thing. And, and if it gets great, there may be some, have it completely attached to the back of the curb. It might be seven feet in some areas, and, and but no less than six feet in minimum width. And we could do that, um, we believe, within the current budget and not change anything because actually asphalt today is cheaper than concrete. So that, that works. To go, uh, you and I talked about widening all the way or using all the right-of-way and moving the si eight-foot side path all the way to the edge of the southern right-of-way. Uh, to do that, We've got uh, water lines that would need to be relocated, electric lines that would need to be relocated, Carroll electric lines that would need to be relocated, relocated Cox cable lines that would need to be ro relocated. And just that cost alone is, is estimated to be 300,000 additional dollars. And if we start talking about bringing in a contractor uh, to do that greater widening, that's another 600 some odd thousand dollars 
and to go to the full width, which is 32 feet, which is the master street plan is really intended to go to new streets, brand new streets where there's no, constri no constrictions, right? Uh, that cost uh, with a contractor at that point is uh, one point estimated $1.9 million. I asked staff last Thursday or Friday to stop whatever they're doing and really work on that. But, but I think, Director Allen, we could meet the intent and Director Hunt meet the intent of having a path six foot and get that street at least from 18 feet of asphalt to asphalt to 23 and possibly 24 feet from asphalt on the north to the back of the curb on the south. And that would give us, you know, uh, okay, in so some cases. So there's not going to be curb and gutter on the other side. It's the on north the side, side, no, just oh, on the okay. south side. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, just curb and gutter on the south I side. I think that would be fantastic because okay. even that amount of width is huge for an 18-foot street. Agreed. And so, uh, I, it, you know, it's so much to take in if you can write it all up and let us peruse what you just gave us to let us just know, you know, ex expenses and everything. Uh, I, it's I, been needed for a long time. If we can do, if, 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 well, just let me ask you this. If, if, if you're okay, if, and if Director Hunt's okay, uh, I think staff can amend the plans very quickly to show a six-foot side path and that additional two feet being extended to the asphalt. I think it's an easy change, and I don't believe uh, Kevin's here. He, he ran the numbers. He believes we can do it within the, uh, the current budget that we have for that, and if that's the case, if you're okay with that, we'll move on tomorrow and start making those changes and get this project underway. I I would like to see the project move forward. Yeah, and I'll, I I had brought up the south side because I thought as many homes are on that south side that are well off the street, if they benefited from a wider street, they would probably give you two or three feet. So, and I shouldn't speak for them, but I'm just saying. Well, this they would benefit from doing the it this street. way. The yeah. other thing, if we if we go all the way to the right of way with the side path, we have to have extra temporary construction easements from everybody. Right, right. But I, in listening in in discussing with you last week and your concerns, um, I think reducing the path from eight to six feet and and widen the street those two additional feet, and in some areas we may get a little bit more asphalt or concrete to make up the difference so that there's no small strip of grass, then that, I think, gives everybody what they're looking for, a, a, a side path for walkers or bikers who don't want to be on the road, a slightly widening street to get it that wide. Because it's a, it's a narrow street, there's no question. Yeah, about it. and that way we're not locked into 18-foot street yes, from sir. now to yeah. eternity. Yeah. 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 That right. was my biggest concern, is even if we had to put this off, I just didn't want us to be locked. I, yeah. If you're comfortable with that, I'll, I'll direct staff in the morning to make that quick change and we'll, we'll continue moving that project forward based on that difference. Otherwise, motion to adjourn. I have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. Roll call. Rissler. Huh? Roll call. Rissler. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's willing to stay. Yes. Carol. Yes. Blair. Yes. Wiles? Yes. Hunt. Oh, let me think Motion. about it. Motion yes. to adjourn is approved. <laughs> Number 10.